This is open. I was going to say, those are all open for all this space yeah. right here. Right. Right. Corey, we're in one of our cuts. All right, guys, six o'clock, we'll call it to order and say the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we got everybody here, so we've got a form to go there. Changes to the regular agenda. Uh, remove and then item 10. You that, Chuck? Oh. We did not have to put the specs in there, so. Okay. We're gonna do Anything else? Nope. You guys want any changes you're aware of? Otherwise, I'll look for a motion to accept the regular agenda I, with the change. I can make a motion to accept the or approve the regular agenda with the removal oh. of number ten. Okay. Can I get a second? Second. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Is there a second? All in favor, say aye. 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 Carried. All right. Consent agenda. Any last changes on that? If not, we'll for a motion to accept the consent agenda as is. I'll make the motion. Okay. Jeff makes a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. So a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. <coughs> Council minutes from last time. Any changes or corrections? Additions? Okay, I'll look for a motion to accept the answer. Motion to accept. Sarah makes a motion to accept. Can I get a second? I'll second. And we get a second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Anybody got anything they want to talk, talk about tonight? Going once. <coughs> yep. Come on up to the mic. Introduce yourself, please. I'm Shelley Strahiel. I live on Third Street. Um, it's oh, the mics don't. The, the mics the only mics do don't record. Project out. Yeah, there's not. There's no speakers in the place here. That are running through the microphone. So just go ahead and go ahead and talk, talk, talk louder <laughs> to us, and we'll. Okay. You. We can't hear you back there either. So yep. everyone should just talk louder. So, <laughs> um, the Nelson project, um, the trucking road again that got um, petitioned not to go um, a couple years ago, and now the water improvements on that also. Um, that's what. I think <laughs> that one's on number nine. Number nine, right. yeah. It's on the agenda tonight. Yeah. So we'll be discussing it then. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Any, Chalice. Anybody else? I had the same thing as what she did. Okay. Mr. Hoffman, what do you have for us this evening? Evening. I just uh, had a question around the, I was reading the new ordinances and the wind turbines. So my question is around that, what the intent of it is, if it's residential or if it's commercial or what, you know, what's the point of it and how large can they be, that type of thing. Lucas, you got anything on that one? Uh, we can discuss it under number 11 if you okay. prefer. Okay. Under 11, 11. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Then we will move along. I know the sheriff's reports next time around. Maple Lakes Country Acres. Brenton, you got this one. Okay, an update for council. Uh, at your last council meeting, we talked about the gate there between Maple Lakes and Country Acres of opening it. Council took action to open it for two weeks and asked that we order signs that say emergency vehicles only. Those signs have been ordered. Staff has indicated to me that it will be towards middle to late April here when those signs should be coming in. They didn't have an exact timeline, but that's what it was indicated to them from the manufacturer for signs. Um, with that, we're asking the council if you'd like to continue to keep that gate open or what you would like to do otherwise. And as soon as we get those signs, we'll pull them up. Like I said, we just, they they have to be ordered and made. So that's our challenge. Thoughts? I have not had a chance to talk with uh, either homeowner on either side. Um, I was gone on vacation, so 
Um, if if I did hear that the the one homeowner did go out there and try closing it again, um, and then city staff I believe talked to him. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, and we have not, of my knowledge, I don't had heard of any other issues tied to the gate. Okay. Um, Chris, have you guys started construction yet this year? No one is in ours. I realize that. Oh, have yeah. you started construction this year? Um, we haven't. We don't have any projects in the foundation, but so we've been working all winter. But uh, if we did have a new project, we'd probably be starting pretty soon. Okay. Within the next probably week or two. Okay. And so to clarify, going forward, we hope to get signs that say mm -hmm. emergency vehicles only yep. for that stretch of the roadway, only for emergency vehicles yes. to you so the gate, going the gate, forward. The gate would be open, and then going forward, we'd have signage on both uh, access from where it is on Maple Lakes and Country Acres, so both ends saying emergency vehicles only. Do, okay. we, have a, do we have a fine written up yet, Lucas? That was the last thing we tested with mm -hmm. last week for this was, what's the fine going to be? Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, I, I talked to uh, Sarah in our office who handles uh, municipal prosecutions for the city uh, in regard to this. And so we're trying to find the century code limits, uh, as we discussed before, limits what kind of fines are out there, depending on what the sign is. So we're trying to figure out what kind of violation this would be under the century code. Uh, some of the fines that are listed are not going to be kind of what you're expecting. $20, $50 um, is kind of what the limits might be. There are some violations where it's $200 or $250, uh, but we need to see if the way that this road will be signed, if it meets the definition of um, a limited access type road, and then what kind of violation um, fine is, is tied to that. So we did talk about it, but I have not gotten a Final answer on that. <coughs> and so, were you gonna? Were we going to be closing it during construction season, or we were just gonna have the sign? So, was a sign of it we so um, I guess I'm I'm open to hearing either side. I know when the fire chief and I and the mayor talked about it, it was. You might want to see. Yeah, we'll okay. we should probably talk. When, when, the, when some of us talked with the fire chief and the, <coughs> um, the head of the fire board, it was leaving it open during the wintertime and then closing it during busy construction season so that people don't have the urge to go down that road. <coughs> um, right now, I don't know if we have met that limit yet of construction season. And we did have um, Thompson Homes here last week uh, to at least, or not last week, I'm sorry, last meeting, to discuss that. So for right now, I don't know of any problems. If there is a problem, I'm assuming those residents are going to ask for it to be closed immediately. That's so. what I would guess, too, if we start seeing a lot of construction traffic going through there. But, I mean, that's, that's why we're going to put the signage up for one Yeah, okay. and council, uh, the Thompson Homes representatives, Jeff mentioned, were at the last council meeting. Um, my understanding is all the homes being built in that subdivision are Thompson homes, and they indicated that they would be working with their subs to make sure they're aware, don't go that way. Come in along 100th or County Road 14. So that there was some communication even at the last council meeting with them about that. So. And so the two issues are the period of time before we get the signage up, mm -hmm. and then see how it goes with, with the signage. Yep. The, the last council action was open for two weeks. Okay. We're at the two weeks. So tomorrow we'd either have to keep it open or shut it. Okay. We just need a council action of one way or another. For I guess for me on the second part of the issue, once the emergency signs are put up, um, I I will I will support that. Uh, but if we have difficulties with that, not that we can surveil our way out of that situation anyway. If we if we have people that are not following the the emergency vehicle only, and we have a lot of traffic through there, then I think we would need to revisit closing it. Um, I guess I would see what the rest of you f feel about this time period now until we can get the signs put up, what we should do. Um, I'd like to hear other people's thoughts. I guess I'd say we leave it open until we start hearing complaints at this point. So right now we haven't heard any. Okay. 
I'm fine with that. Sir? And my stance has been clear all along. I, I don't believe that private gates have any business on public roads for emergency access reasons. And at this point in time, I, I agreed to the signage. And I think that uh, the, the hope is that it will help. And uh, we'll see what the traffic looks like in a couple more weeks. Yeah, revisit it. Um. All right. So why don't we just keep it as is? Um, guys, we're not going to change anything right now, and then we'll see if we get complaints. Okay. Yeah. All right. I will need a motion for that one. Just a reminder. Okay. So we'll make the motion. Make a motion to leave the gate at Maple Lakes Country Acres uh, open uh, until um, it is deemed that it needs to be closed. Okay, just makes a motion. Can I get a second on that one? I'll second. Stephanie does a second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. On the next one. Jim, you got nine. So two weeks ago, City Council directed us to look into the 8th Avenue project by meeting with the council members and meeting with um, staff to Speak discuss up that. so they can hear you too. This one's You're only speak so loud. All right. So. I'll turn towards us, please. <laughs> These microphones only work for the online stuff. We don't have any speakers in the back. Okay. But we're going to be working on that. Can you bring up the memo? So the first thing we talked about was the project location. It originally proposed, was proposed with Nelson Drive and 8th Avenue between County Road 17 and 8th Avenue, and 8th, or Nelson, and between County Road 17 and Nelson Drive. That was included for some store, sanitary sewer purposes for, for, us, or for the Sparks edition. After discussions with staff and with the council members, that has been removed from the project. So County Road 17 to Nelson Drive on 8th, and Nelson, Park South has been recommended to be removed from the project. Continuing the project east from Nelson to 5th down to the Sparks Edition. We talked about that before as to if it stops at 4th Street or if it stops at 5th Street. We are, I'm recommending that it goes to 5th Street to eliminate two dead ends and to eliminate the potential for a project driver in the future. The sewer will be brought up at a different time as part of a different project. So we looked at the entire mile section as a whole to see how 8th Avenue fits into this entire mile section of roadway. Go all the way to the maps, please. <coughs> Pass that one. That one there. Can we zoom out? Yep. <coughs> Actually, if we go to the next one, please. <coughs> All right, this is tough to see, I understand. But the area, the roads that are in a thick red line, 100th Avenue and Wall Avenue, are arterial roads. They are on the mile line. Half mile roads are called collectors. We have a half mile crossing approximately where 8th Avenue is. So we approach this as a connector roadway being on the half mile line. Special assessment policy as it sits today defines that every parcel a mile, half a mile in each direction to the nearest arterial is in the district. Hence why the district was originally brought up to be Wall Avenue and it went down to the north side of Vistos. <clears throat> the future connection of that, granted we're only talking about the first three blocks, but the future of that road comes over to you betcha down and across at the south side of the lagoons. So we approached it, like I said, as a collector road being the district set as per the policy. So 8th Avenue is merely a street project with utility crossings. It's not, there's storm sewer on it, but there's storm sewer on anything where there's curb and gutter. So the utility crossings are 4th Street, 3rd Street, and then some down 5th. So, looking at it as a whole on the section line, the district that I would say was recommended was from Wall 
south down to down to Vistos or down to that area. So, are there any questions so far? If you can't see, we Lucas can okay. Yep. Thank you. <coughs> so for those of you in the back, the areas that I was talking about is this is 8th, this is Uvetcha, and this would be a continuation of 8th to be that half mile collector road. This Uvetcha becomes the half mile north south collector where 8th is the major east west collector. 8th is the only road along here that has direct access to County Road 17 and eventually to Veterans Boulevard. Park starts at Nelson and stops here and it's really close to Wall to be that half mile connector. Um, Luther doesn't have connection to County Road 17 directly and it comes into a loop road in the El Dorado edition not allowing access across Drain 27 over to Veterans Boulevard. So the area that we have proposed for a project is third to fifth and down, and then this would be a future project at some time. Not, it's not in the five-year capital improvement plan at this time. So unless there was a project driver, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be pushed, so to speak. What's wrong with the way the road is right now? With 8th? Yeah. What, what do you mean? There isn't a road there. Well, what comes, what comes right off of the 17th? There's that portion of it, but 4th okay, is a dead end, 3rd is a dead end. Yep. So. We have two ways out already, so what is this going to help? The project was petitioned by the Sparks Edition, so that is something for discussion. That's um, to the south. That's to the south. That is the area here with the roads thrown in here. They are included in the special assessment district. They are. So when is that going to be developed? Uh, I would say within the next couple of years. Within the next couple of years. They would like it to be this year, but there's some infrastructure constraints that are having to be reviewed first. So why are we paying for it now? It won't be built till this summer. So. In, in advance of that project, so they can do that one too. What I'd like to know is I've lived on 3rd Street for 35 years on the north end. It doesn't, that's, this road isn't going to benefit me a bit. <coughs> the one that's going to benefit is the people who are going to be in this new development. Also, the uh, construction area that's on the, uh, on the end of 3rd and 4th Street, they're the ones that are going to benefit off it. They will get benefit, so will the new people, yes. I yeah. agree. So, so why am I paying for it? Mr. Mayor, if, if we're going to have a back and forth, do you want people to come up and provide public <coughs> comment, or how if do you want to approach this? Right, because one of the things here is we've gone through this one time where we thought we had the district lined up, then it got changed, and now we're going back looking at this again. One of the things that everybody needs to keep in mind here is that this is on the preliminary right now, and even if we accept this improvement district as it stands right now, it doesn't mean that it can't change in the future. And we're two years away from even having the special assessment committee probably come down on what this is going to look like. And even the <clears throat> when they do come down on it, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to get 100% assessed on this either. The further away you are from the action, it probably means there'll be a decrease. Not always, but sometimes it does. Al, you can let me know if I'm wrong <coughs> on this, but you guys, be, are able to go through this and look at and try and make it fair and then the this, this body here has the final say on that okay what we're trying to do here right now is to see who is going to be involved in the special assessment district okay that's what this is a, this is about what we're talking about this evening so, so there is an approved special assessment district yep. and it is from park drive south to the north line of the Visto addition, leaving out the parcels to the north right. of Park. So yep. the discussion that we're having is, is that the correct district, knowing that 8th is potentially going to be that major east-west collector street as defined that the community gets benefit from major east-west 
major north-south and arterial east-west and arterial north-south. So let's drop back to the council. We viewed this as a collector street. Is there any opinion on or concern or questions with this being a collector street? Yes. And they are. And I have told you that I do not agree that 8th should be considered a collector. And the reason why is because I don't think it's right for the city to bounce back and forth. Oh, we have to go by the comp plan when, it, when, it, when it's necessary to get your project done. But then whenever we decide, oh, we have something else in mind, we're gonna change it. This road is not on the comp plan, Jim. It's not even a road listed on the comp 2045 plan whatsoever. The road that is indicated to be the corridor road would be Park Drive. And I understand that you guys say it should be halfway between the mile marker, but in my opinion, we can't have it both ways. If you're gonna go from using Comp Plan 2045 to plan out the city in one aspect and then turn around and say, well, we can't do that because this is the, this is the halfway point. Like, we, we have to make up our minds on, are we using a Comp 2045 plan or not? That's my opinion, I've stated it, um, and I know that there's other opinions on council, but I don't agree that that is, that is correct. Um, I, if we're going to change the district, there has been so much controversy because I live in this neighborhood that I will not be voting on a district. I have been told that I shouldn't, so it's gonna be something that you guys are gonna to have to decide. However, I would like to say my piece that I do not agree that that is, a, that is a corridor. If you're going to abstain from voting on it, you should also abstain from speaking on it. It, it carries the same effect. Well, I have, to, I have to make sure that my constituents understand that I hear them. Also, that's why most of us are here today. I'm just letting you know that if you're going to abstain from voting, you should abstain from discussing All right, the matter. well, I will say nothing further. What if we disagree with that? <clears throat> I'd like to hear what you guys to say. With the yeah. law? I, I, I'm happy she did speak up. <clears throat> so, are we going to open this up for public discussion and all the way around tonight? Okay, if you get, anybody wants to get up and talk about it, get up here to the microphone, please, and introduce yourself. We will let about four or five people have a discussion on this. So anybody wants to talk, come on up and, dis and address us on this one, please. Dave Cornell, I live up on the north end of 4th Street. I've been out here for over 25 years. Um, <clears throat> I've talked to my neighbors on 4th Street, and they all said the same thing. You open up 4th Street to the south to this road, this 8th Avenue. None of us want to drive through the light commercial district you got at the end of 4th Street. It's not going to benefit us at all on 4th Street to go down and drive through that light commercial with all the traffic and trucks they've got in there. Okay. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Anyone else? My name is Jason Yoke. I live on 4th Street as well. I got like two questions. Where 8th Street is, the block long that it is right now, you keep going east, you run into a blue building over there just to the south of the city. So when South Sparks Edition was platted, there's a kink in, there's a jog in there, so it goes south. Right, there's a jog in there. So that's what you're going to do? You're going to put a jog in that street and head south? No, we're going to put a jog down and then come across. I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's a location map shown in this one or not. No, there's a little jog there. <coughs> See, there's the jog right there underneath that ECT. It comes down and then it'll go over to 5th Street that way. Because you're right. There so is you're even getting closer right to the lots that... There's nothing on that we'll be paying the taxes so that those guys can make money on whenever they develop. They'll, that area is platted. Yeah, that's right. And that area is, from what I understand, planned to be built on within the next year. Like I said earlier, we there are some constraints with infrastructure getting there, and that's what's <coughs> necessitating this second sewer project is to get some services to them. But 8th is the start of what we could call off-site improvements for, for that area. And I don't want to look at it just as as that 
addition, it's it's the whole area. And I, I know you guys have an opinion on it. I was around in 2017 when you guys Yeah, we shot it down. Yeah, exactly. I was in that But we didn't even know this meeting was going on tonight on a chance that we could be tossed into paying for these taxes. I, I was told there was letters sent out to so us all the way up to Wall, which okay. never happened. The purpose of this meeting was that we were, when the district was discussed two weeks ago, we were to look into it at, on a whole, mm -hmm. make sure that the project consisted of the parts that made the most sense, make sure that the project limits were where it needed to be, and look at it as a whole. Well, that's what we did, and that's how you right. guys kind of got brought into it, is just because with that's it being a half mile line going each direction, so the process <coughs> of you getting notified would still be coming, I believe. I was told by the office down there today that it was already sent out. You didn't get and number two, I'd, I'd be surprised. If, I don't think you got a letter. No, we didn't. None so of us got a letter. That's what we're saying. Those and and you said this is just a start of the meeting. Well, if we don't come up here and start stepping on it now, you guys go further on with it, and then your minds are set, and that's the way it happens. That's no, why we want If we don't have a district, we can't just send out letters for the sake of sending out letters. It has to be to the district, and that's why those south of Park received it, and that's why they came to the public information <coughs> because they were in the district. You wouldn't have even known about the public meeting because you weren't in the district. And that's when the city council said, taking their comments, we should look at this in a whole. We should look at this in more. So if the city council decides to change the district boundary, yep. additional letters are gonna come out. But at that point, you guys are gonna be already set and have your mindset on, is what I'm saying. That's why it'd be nice to know that Additional letters to property owners within the new district will get sent out and there will be another public comment uh, type informational, informal, meeting with landowners again okay. so that that will be forthcoming if the council decides to change its mind on the district boundary <coughs> but in terms of what the, the previous district boundary was was set at you wouldn't have gotten letters because you weren't within exactly. that boundary yeah but again if the boundary changes we're gonna have to create a whole new district uh improvement district number and, and map to reflect that to give everyone at the fair opportunity yeah, but I, I don't to want get a letter. I don't think you guys should. If you're going to do anything, you should go to the undeveloped side if you want to expand it. And it's the, city, of people that have been out here. It's the city council's decision on what they do tonight that. with the district boundary. And so, so my second question was that light commercial area down there. When did that become commercial, light commercial? How many years ago? Anybody have an idea? About 30 years ago. 30 years ago? To be commercial property and all you guys' rules and stuff like that, light commercial, heavy commercial, do you have to have water and sewer? Right now, if I want to put a commercial building, do I have to have water and sewer? Don't everybody answer at once. Yeah, it's a requirement. Of the yeah, the requirement is 30 years ago there was no water and sewer down there. It should have never been mm -hmm. light commercial. That's history. It's hey, history. We, we built, hey, we built there set then that when that wasn't commercial. We didn't ask them to build next to a commercial spot. You guys <coughs> made it a commercial spot. We didn't move into a commercial spot. You guys made it. History or not, it wasn't done right. Okay, but it's that's the way it is now. <laughs> okay, that's the way it always is with you guys. Yeah. The <clears throat> thing I'd like to know is uh, you're going to extend Eighth Street down to the lagoon. So what's going to happen with the lagoon? They're going to be decommissioned here at some point. <clears throat> The lagoons are going to be decommissioned. We will be putting in a sewer system that hooks into Fargo here probably in a year or two. Um, and then those lagoons will be decommissioned. So what's going to be developed in, in where the lagoons are? To be determined. we got to get them decommissioned. It's going to take about probably five to seven years for them to dry out and get approved. Same, same process West Fargo's going through right now. So in other words, there's still going to be the people that are going to get the benefit out of this is going to be the new development that's to the south of it. <coughs> They're going to get the benefit of that 8th Street. They're the ones that are going to, that development is going to be the development that's going to get the, the uh, best part of this whole thing. Well, but you're also going to have people to the north of that too that are going to be using it. It may they not be all the way up the wall, I'm not going to say that, but I mean, there'll be people to the north there too that will be, will be using it as well. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. People have been driving the same way. I know, but it will probably change. Okay, anybody else have a comment they want to make? It's not the same. Otherwise, you're getting repetition here. Uh, Spencer Davis, I live on 4th Street. Um, I've lived here for five years. I've noticed already, uh, without any connecting streets through there, 
that uh, traffic, a lot of traffic speeds through there. Uh, even though it's, on, it's 20 miles an hour, that even seems fast, but people exceed that a lot. Have you put any thought into the fact that all those roads don't have sidewalks? Kids are playing out there all the time. Uh, the kind of traffic that can create. <coughs> I've also uh, noticed it's uh, no truck road, but I just saw a concrete truck go through today. Um, there's chunks of asphalt on the road when I took, took my son for a walk. So um, the implications of that, the road's already crap on 4th and 3rd Street and Wall, so um, are we gonna have to pay for sidewalks with that? Pay for no, new roads? <coughs> That's all gonna be commercial. I know people will drive right through the, our residential in bigger trucks, so I just think that should be um, on people's minds as well. Okay. So the proposed project that we had for 8th Avenue included a shared use path on the south side of the road from County Road 17 over to where that 5th Street is, which is kind of in this general area, and then we had discussed bringing that back up to park. We recognize that park is a very narrow road and there isn't a lot of dedicated right-of-way there. So we have more right-of-way on Nelson Drive with that 10-foot shared use path to kind of uh, get pedestrians and, and walkers off of the narrow park drive. Eighth has got, would be a 10-foot shared use path coming back up to the neighborhoods between Prairie View and then, and then 4th Street. So we, we do look into the, to the pedestrian side of it and with Nelson Drive, not to derail this, but Nelson Drive, we had looked at doing a larger shoulder to accommodate both walkers and, and uh, those bicyclists on, on Nelson. Just because there isn't any pedestrian connectivity in that part of the world. So um, Horace has been pretty good at getting grants in that along 117, so there is a more of an emphasis being put on the pedestrian <coughs> ways, ways through Horace. All right. I do. I do have comments. I, unless somebody else wants to go first. Um, so the original, the district that was approved did go just to Park Drive on here, um, and I know we're revisiting moving it back up to Wall. But I had a different idea for the district that is not mentioned in the memo. Um, we're here today because we received a petition by a developer to extend Eighth Avenue from Nelson Drive to Fourth Street, a length of approximately 1,200 feet to provide a northern access for a new development. And I think the district boundary should reflect that project and its intent. The project is entirely developer driven. This project scope was then expanded to include the infrastructure extension from the Nelson lift station and then major street improvements to Nelson itself were also added, which it sounds like we are taking out tonight, which I agree with. Then the project was expanded yet again without discussion to extend 8th even further east to 5th Street and then down 5th into Sparks. There is no 5th Street north of the proposed 8th. In that area, 8th will run along the south side of our burn pit and it will dead end at the lagoons. We have no current plans to decommission the lagoons. It's not on our CIP. It's a long, very long range project. Um, and I know we talk about the corridor roads east to west. I, I understand that, but we don't have specific corridor roads on the west side of the river. Um, the developer spoke with us at the last meeting and he's not, he was not supportive of extending 8th Avenue beyond 4th Street. And he indicated he does not need 5th Street constructed at this time for connectivity in his development. The developer estimated this addition added over a million dollars to this project and he opposed its inclusion noting it appeared this addition mostly benefited city staff access to the, lagoon, to the lagoon, but at a hefty cost, and I agree with him. There is no need to extend 8th beyond 4th for this project, and the 5th Street into Sparks is a local road to the Sparks development, and when constructed should be included in the local district for Sparks, just like extending Nelson 3rd and 4th is gonna be local improvement for Sparks. Planning and zoning meeting on the subject to discuss connectivity into Sparks, and they deemed it sufficient to have Lillian Avenue, Nelson Street, 3rd, 4th, and Sparks Boulevard for their connectivity in Sparks. In the meeting materials today, I know we discussed this additional regional, stating it's a regional collector from CAS 17 to 57th Avenue. Um, but as we discussed also here tonight, 8th is not even on the comp plan 
as a corridor road. In fact, it's not even noted as a road at all on the comp plan. It shows no future collector roadway to 57th Avenue. There's, there is no future connector roadway shown south of Wall Avenue in this area. And I guess it's a little confusing to me why, why we're bringing that up and discussing it here. It's a very, very long range future uh, project. Um, eighth is a local road petition for access to a new development. 1,200 feet of roadway north along their new development. And the district boundary should reflect that it's a local improvement. The roadway is slated to be two 14-foot driving lanes. And I think the lane widths can be reduced to save costs on this project. I did ask for estimates to see what kind of cost savings we could get. Uh, did we do estimates? Yeah, 3% reduction. So what's the, what's the dollar amount total? So we did it for you, Betcha, because that one was on the agenda for today. It was $188,000 on you, Betcha. Okay, do we on know? On a two and a half million dollar project. Do we know what it is for eighth? I don't have that one in front of me. <laughs> I would assume it's very similar though, because then we were proposing the same, we were proposing the same sections on both of those roadways. So I would be safe <laughs> in saying it's a 3% reduction. I just don't see the need to add four more feet of concrete footprint for the roadway when in comparison, as we discussed at the last meeting, we're putting in 24 driving lanes on 64th Avenue, a major arterial, and the recent upgrades on 76th and 45th that the county did are 12 foot lanes with three foot shoulders, <coughs> no center turn lanes. And also I mentioned the previous project in Fargo, the 32nd Avenue uh, project. Um, I mean, we could also even consider reducing the multi-use path down to eight feet. That's what Fargo did. Just isn't an effort to further reduce the cost of the project for all of the benefiting um, properties. Um, th those, are my, those are my main concerns with this. Um, some of that stuff we need to keep safety features in mind, because I'm sure that's why some of this stuff gets introduced, is because of safety concerns when we're driving as well. The lanes? Mm -hmm. They seem to be sufficient for the other projects that I mentioned here tonight. Anyway, I had originally proposed district for this to be local improvements <coughs> along the west side of the commercial properties that abut Cast 17 up to Park and over. <coughs> and, and those, after further review and research, those are still my thoughts today. So what are you proposing for the district and overall? What, what's, what the, are you getting at? I would propose a northern district of Park Drive. I would propose the same assessment district that we had, except we <coughs> cut out the five commercial properties along Cass 17. I don't see their benefit in this project. And the Cheyenne Trailer Park, and we just bring it over to, to Park. To Park. Why are we dictating that when we have a special assessment committee that has the <coughs> obligation to weigh the benefit of each property and has yeah. means and methodology to do that. Well, but I think we first start with making our best estimation of the benefit of the project, and that's what we did at the last meeting, and that's, I guess, what we're discussing here again tonight. I would never hamstring the Special Assessment Commission, but I think w it behooves us on the council to start with the right-sized district. Well, and I came, the engineers in the city came yeah. up with that first that, that's, that's why we're here. That's why we're here in the first place. And, and for history, for those of you that weren't at the last meeting, the vote was made previously to make this district much smaller, from Park all the way down, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, was it North End of Vistos or all the way to 14th? North End of Vistos. North End of Vistos, right? Yep. And for that to happen, you have a number of properties that are residential there on the south side of park along with the commercial properties that are enveloped and the special assessments would have been so high for those folks it would have been detrimental in my mind so the point of this council is to go on the advice of the engineer and to leave these districts large making that district small was a mistake and really put undue hardship on a number of people so we wanted to revisit this and look at what we could do. And we also want to empower our special assessment committee to take a hard look at this and say, well, 
We've got a development here that has maybe more benefit than others. We have options to do some stepped assessments and things of that nature. But making this district smaller or cutting properties out doesn't do us any good, nor is it our job as a council to do that, to take it to that level. Our job is to go off into your recommendations, take a look at if the project makes sense. I want you to scroll up, Jace, to the next slide, please. We take the feedback and the concerns in this room very, very seriously. And so... This one? Yes. Jim, I'd, I'd like some explanation on some of the changes because we cut out a portion of East Street. We're looking at making this route much smaller. The blue line is something that's not even going to be done in this project, correct? No. Planning. Just looking at that whole Future section. Future down the road. Just looking at that section as a whole. Couple roads, right? There are a lot of areas in Horace that don't have very good connectivity. Okay. And this is trying to get ahead of some of that. We've eliminated the work on Nelson? Yeah. From this project, we have. What else have we eliminated? We eliminated 8th Avenue between Conrad 17 and Nelson due to constructability with Nelson. Okay. We're still recommending from a staff level to continue 8th from, from 4th East and South. Um, I, I know where the opinion lies of most, but I have to present to you what finishes off that area and we can reduce it down at your direction. But um, continuing that along, continuing that corridor, um, my, my concern in the future is what's, gonna, what's going to um, you know, drive that section again. I know we've had conversations about if it'll be city driven or if it'll be a developer driven. Uh, we don't know that and, that's, and I acknowledge that. but. I also looked at 3rd Street and 4th Street, and neither one of those were continued back to Nelson on the south side. And had that been a requirement when those streets went in, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. We would be talking about just the extension over to 5th and down to get to 5th Street. But that's not where we're at. We do have to worry about 8th along that whole corridor. So we're not actually talking about extending this all the way over to the lagoons. We're, we're stopping it at, what is that, 5th? Yes, It'll the come red down is 5th. And, and there's, the, there's common sense reasons for why it would come down. I don't know how many people like garbage trucks going up a road and then backing back out. Same with snow plows. Where the hell are you going to put snow? So being able to have a turnaround <coughs> there makes sense, right? It adds a little bit of cost but we've eliminated a very large portion of this project and are reserving that for future use. So let's talk a little bit more about what's included in this project and the fact that this district has been significantly enlarged to lighten the burden of any assessments on this. I see that we're on the north end of the new development. Is it uh, <coughs> the general thought that the people to the north there that border that will not have benefit? North of Park Avenue? On the north side of this red line. South of Park on 3rd and 4th is where she's talking. So south of, say one more time please. The, the stop, this, this little bit right here. And I mean, the, the <coughs> opportunity to go south and to get down, there is benefit. Now if it's direct benefit, 100% benefit, I'll uh, agree with you. I don't think it's 100% necessarily. No, it's not. You, you're talking from Park Avenue to 3rd and 4th Street, though? Well, look at these ones here. I can't see the permission. Sorry, I'll beef it up a little bit. Mr. Mayor, just to do a quick update on the conflict of interest stuff, if the council majority is acceptable to Councilmember Berkland speaking on and participating in the vote, uh, you guys can waive the conflict. So if the council wants to make a motion second, majority approve it, Councilmember Berkland can discuss this matter. Leave it up to you guys. And vote on it. I, do I you no want to vote? I have no problem including her testimony. I don't think she wants to vote. The problem is, is that I was given a very difficult time by certain individuals um, that felt like I should not be able to vote on a district that would include my home. And so I'm just trying to make everyone happy. I want to, I want to be able to have my constituents 
hear what I have to say so that they know what where I stand. And I also understand that it might look like, on the other hand, that they want me to not participate in the vote. So I, I just wanted my constituents to be able to hear what I have to say and know that they can talk to me. Um, the majority of these people obviously live in my neighborhood. And so I wanted them to know my thoughts. That's all. Okay, so I guess I'll leave it up to you guys. Anyone wants to make a motion on the second? I'll make a motion to wait the uh, centers. I'll, su I'll second. What's it for? They, the, to allow the, her to speak towards this issue okay. if she wants. And, and vote on it. Okay. The governing body can, a majority of the governing body can waive the conflict of interest. Okay. All right, so Jeff made the motions. Step D this second, so all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that's a majority. Okay. All right, next topic then. Do you guys want to talk about anything else with this project? Are the extensions? I just have one question. Go ahead. I live on the corner of 4th Street. My Midwest Introduce Park yourself, Park. please. Sorry. My name is Blake Corcoran. I live on the corner of 4th Street. I guess my biggest concern is at the primary meeting, are you guys going to rezone YB? Because he's technically like commercial, but he's zoned residential. Is there a plan to rezone it? Yeah. To my knowledge, yes. yes. Okay, I just want to make sure because everything's already set in action. Because I live, whatever, south of Park Drive. Everyone's frustrated. No one wants to pay for it. Is driven by the new development is a major concern. So I just want to make sure that maybe people are tracking that YB is actually going to pay his share for that road that benefits his trucks. So, all right. No, we are going to have conversations about that. I think that's fair. No. And that will no, just be that will be resolved if the land use ordinance is adopted and with the applying of a new zoning district. Those are accounted for in that to correct the zoning district for those properties. Right. How long does that take to make effect? Tonight. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Reading so, so after tonight, though, it takes effect immediately? Okay. Yeah. After tonight, we'll publish notice in the paper that says that it takes effect. So okay. then it's deemed. Yeah. Are the are the extensions of Nelson third and fourth? That's within the Sparks Local Improvement District, correct? South, <coughs> south of the south property line. South of eight. Of eight. Yeah. Is all included in. In the local improvements. Of Sparks. So I I don't see the distinction with fifth then, the south extension. That's a local improvement. Could be a requirement of that project to put that in, yeah. Well, at the at the developer's discretion, he was here at the last meeting and said he doesn't need the connectivity at this time. When he deems that he needs the connectivity, he clearly stated he had uh, access from Fourth and Luther. Um, I would assume that he would petition and have a local improvement in the future, or maybe that would be at his discretion. I, I believe that local services needs the connectivity. That's what I was alluding to earlier or stating factually is that it doesn't make sense to have garbage trucks and snow plows come to a dead end and have nowhere to go and nowhere to turn around. It's been like that. Every town has it. Yeah, it's been like this forever. We're trying to fix some of the sins of the past. The mayor, the mayor said it was all history already, so that third street that we're talking about, the fourth street, that's been that way for how long? 35 years. Exactly. <coughs> I guess I'll go up here. I have my other concern. Obviously, right on the corner there, people already speed down Park Drive East, like pretty pretty fast. I'm not saying sidewalks because then you guys special assess me again. Before you know, we're paying Fargo specials. I moved to Horace. I've been 30 years in Horace. My parents live Sunset Drive over there. Before you guys annexed them, everything else. My major concern is and then. I got traffic going this way, it's being by my house, and I got traffic going this way, it's being by my house. What's your guys' plan to address the traffic? Because right now, I don't think there's anything to address the speed of traffic on that, and I just don't, like, I want to have a thought process on the increased flow of traffic. And people north of Park Drive, I understand no one wants to pay for this special assessment. Right now, the economy is tough, regardless. But if I see people coming down 4th <coughs> Street, I'm going to be a little bit frustrated. Or if I see people coming down 3rd Street and cutting my lot, 
I'm going to be a little bit more frustrated because I'm the benefit, but other people are using it. I know there's arguments either way for that, but I just kind of see what your guys' thoughts are on it. To talk about your, the speeding issue, unfortunately, that's all over town. Let me talk to the, to the deputies about that too. You know, we can't have them everywhere all the time. It's unfortunate. I mean, short of putting speed bumps all over town, I don't know what else we're going to be able to do with that. Yeah, even that. They're still going to speed through the streets. They do that all over town. So it's not like we're addressing something new here. This is ongoing in town here. So that's a frustration all the way around on that. Well, I, I, I think there's this growing frustration about how, in my opinion, Fargo, I mean, Horace is the new Fargo, rich suburb of Fargo, in my opinion. I got people moving here that Horace was this way a certain amount of time. People loved the Horace the way it was. People got left alone in Horace. Now we got developers petitioning because people can't pay their tax on their land anymore. And they're like, well, let's petition it and let's get people to pay for it. And they're just going to walk away with their money and be happy. Um, and their old residents of Horace, some of these guys were end up paying for it because everyone wants all this new development and all this fancy stuff that old Horace never wanted in my opinion, from growing up here my whole life. People, like I talked to my dad, I'm like, did Horace ever bother you this much with it? They're like, no, kind of left us alone. We're kind of our own entity, kind of go with the flow. But now I'm getting special assessed 12 grand. And it's just on top of everything else in this economy and everything else, a lot of people, that's probably why everyone else is here. We're getting tired of paying for it. Because say, and then all of a sudden, next thing we can know, well, we're going to do this. Next thing you know, I have 40,000 specials that no benefit to me. That's my concern, because I'm already backwards on my house as it is. And then now you guys are going to special assess me out of it to a point where I don't, you know, that's my concern. And then I got more traffic, and then people are going to look at that when, they, when I sell my house. Well, you got all these traffic going this way and that way. Well, we don't want that. And then eventually sidewalks, because my biggest concern is sidewalks, too, because eventually I feel like it's coming. You guys are going to want to put sidewalks in, and I'm going to get slaughtered for that, too. I don't know about the future of that is because people are going to be like, well, there's more increased traffic now, so now we need sidewalks. Here's another 12 grand. Where does it start and where does it stop? That's my concern because I, I moved to like, this location because I wanted to get left alone. It was on a dead end street towards whatever by Minnesota Iron Ironworks, not a lot of traffic. That's why I moved it. And now everything's changing so rapidly, I don't know what to do about it. And the way Horace is growing, I don't know where you guys are going to stop with the special assessments is my concern. I know obviously you guys got to grow, you guys got forced by Fargo to grow, because Fargo's right there, you drive another three miles, it's right there. So I just, I just, don't, I just don't know where it stops. If I may. Yep. I moved to Horace in 2015. I closed on my house in 2016. Moved into a development that had fields on all three sides of it with a dead end gravel road right next to my house. Three special assessment districts later, well on my way to my fourth, I have a major <coughs> arterial road next to my house. The schools that were supposed to go north to me went south. I have connectivity between the two. And I feel your pain. I really do. As a council, we've increased letters of credit. We've increased bonding. We've done everything we can to be reasonable but you can't tell developers that own this land that they can't build on it because that's against the law, yep. right? Yep. It'd be like me telling you what to do with your own land. Nope. And so... Why can't you come in from the salt? They're already... They're built into the salt. Why can't they take those streets and go up to his property and leave the... You know, like Fargo has a commercial area and a residential area. You're not going to build a house in the north of 12th Avenue next to UPS and not pitch well the traffic because they told you you ever seen what's filmed. Like he said, he lived, he would have done house. That wasn't commercial when we moved in there, I guess. That was just a shop for a couple guys to work on their cars on Saturday afternoons. There was no bathrooms down there. There was no water down there. It was a quiet part of town. That's why we moved out here, we moved to that section. You guys changed that. By add this, you're gonna make it even worse for us. Well, you guys is previous councils. I'm gonna be clear on that because we've taken a lot of steps to identify areas in town that are a little more reasonable for residential construction versus industrial construction. I believe the developers here tonight, Jack, would you like to step up and speak to 
what is in your plat for the Sparks edition so that we can be clear about what areas are going where and why. Hello, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, Jack Dwyer on behalf of the Sparks, and um, I'll address the, the question uh, directly. In our first phase, um, we, don't, we have Nelson, 3rd and 4th going in, and Luther all the way over to Ubecha. Ubecha is a city project um, that will be constructed <coughs> in the south, and so everything that's showing shown south of Luther um, is in a future phase. Jack, so, tell them what you're planning to put uh, along that north area there, like between 3rd, 4th, and 5th that you've got up there. What's that going to be developed Close into? Close to the residential areas. Um, yeah, so these blocks here, um, these blocks will be single family home. We're saving the trees. Those will be mm -hmm. saved as part of an HOA lot to provide a buffer between some of the industrial uses on both the west and the north side. So we'll have residential here, here. We do have a multifamily lot here because we were not aware that fourth was going to be, cons I mean, that eighth was going to be constructed <coughs> east of fourth. Um, and so we were, we didn't realize we'd have access on the east side of fifth. So we own, we have one multifamily lot here that's a 1.7 acre lot. And then we have <coughs> two family homes uh, for the rest of that block. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're looking at continuing the residential feel including the multi-family, which would be townhomes, twin homes, something along that line, right? Multiple families in one area. All along third, fourth, and fifth, pretty much, indefinitely. Correct. And then future planning takes us to the south, and that hasn't been determined as of yet. Um, yeah, would you like me to keep going? Please. Okay. Yeah, so for future plans, uh, pretty much everything east of fourth will all be residential, <coughs> mostly single family homes. I think there will be maybe some some townhomes or something along this segment. Uh, this will be mixed use um, in these two lots. Um, this will be a public park, and these will be uh, city public park slots or. City hall. City, city property. City, city property, property yeah. of some yeah. sort. So, so the Luther Street dead in there, just like how it is? Up on there? Uh, Luther. Um, yes, there's an easement to the to that property to the west there. Correct, Jace? Yeah, through there, there's, there's access easements through there. All the future access control are providing a connection between potential commercial redevelopment or these commercial lots through to Lake <coughs> Lane. Eventually at some point if these were to redevelop this would be a connection through Could. Liberty or to Liberty at that point. Right. And so you petition these improvements for access for families, correct? Correct. Predominantly. Jack on the far, but just on the south side there, like up against the tree line there. What was that going to be? It was multi. You're thinking multi-family, or were you thinking family um, housing <coughs> along there, like on the south, along the south tree line? Um, we just have uh, um, the plot line is continuous with this northern property line right there, and everything above that. Well, there's an L that's an HOA lot. There's a 1.7 acre lot that is uh, zoned for, you know, multifamily. So, okay. an apartment or townhomes or something. Okay. Hasn't been decided on. Okay. Did you say you were leaving that tree line there? Correct. Why? Uh, just so that it looks nice. They're all dead. No, no I'm just curious why. Um, so I thought a minute ago you said just to detour the noise from the commercial and all that stuff. Well, yeah, to provide a buffer so that it looks nice. This council is pretty big on buffering against existing lots. Yep. We've had some difficulties in the past, my neighborhood included, where buffering wasn't done. 
and it was brought back later that whether it be landscaping, whether it be trees, whether it be a fence, whether it be a park or something along that lines, it just makes common sense to try to buffer different uses and a tree line isn't a bad way of doing it. No, I, I get that, that, but if everybody north of that line is going to deal with all this more traffic and nonsense going on, we don't have a buffer, but the new developments can have a buffer from well, that the road that's being put in. That, that buffer is meant to buffer the, both directions. Well, the new road we're putting in for that development is north of that buffer. It's north of the tree line. Yes. Yeah. So it's not buffering us from the road, it's buffering them from the road. Yeah, the, the developer's family, I think, planted those trees in around 1990. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, most of them, there are some poplars that have died, but we have walked that, those tree lines with uh, a specialist or an arborist. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of new growth, and there's growth, and there's a lot of dogwoods. Um, so it still is a vibrant tree row, even though there are some dead poplars in there. They can be cleaned up as part of the... Part of the process. Part of the project. Okay. All right. So. So there's only one, basically one road that goes out of the new development, and the only other ways to get it out are going to be through the current residential to the north. I'll answer the question. Uh, Luther will be, Luther will be constructed all the way to U Betcha. U Betcha will be constructed all the way down to County Road 14 or Highway 100, whatever you call it. And then 8th will be constructed on the north, running east and west. So really, that's all you need for streets, because it's just like going down 40th Avenue in Fargo. It goes all the way across, it gets, it gets no south, and those people only have one way in and one way out on all those homes in there, too. It would be the same thing if you did that, but putting that access road going across the north. Couldn't you put a road south of the tree line and have that curve around to the south of the tree line, and you, got, you still have plenty of access around there? Well, actually, 8th has been platted and dedicated for quite some time. 8th has not been. They've said that it's not on there at all. Well, it wasn't on the 2045 comprehensive plan, as uh, several of our council members have pointed out. That comprehensive plan is meant to be a guideline for future growth. At the time, they had talked about extending park, but you can see that there are limiting factors to extend park, which is why the collector road was moved down to eighth. Just so everyone's aware, there was there was land dedicated for uh, future access in the plats. Correct. So in the comp plan or not, it's dedicated in the plats when those developments. On the road. north half, the Sparks half has was not dedicated until we filed our plat. Correct. Correct. Oh, right. Which is in accordance with city ordinance. Correct. So. Do we want to talk at all about why 8th makes sense more so than park? For a crossing? Mm-hmm. We have, the city has more right-of-way to construct the improvements on that. Park Drive doesn't have direct access to County Road 17 like 8th does. It, uh, doesn't <coughs> drain crossing. Drain crossings are typically permitted on the mile and half mile lines. Um, like I said, it's a future planning thing, but if you go to the mile north of that in the Cup Creek Edition, 83rd Street is the half mile, and that's where the crossing was built as part of the Cup Creek Second Edition. I'm just um, asking because, you know, we referenced the comp plan, and at that time, park was identified. So I believe that all the folks in this room and several that aren't would be included if park was done as well, correct? Oh yeah, it'd be no different. The district would be the Whether same. it was a regional improvement or a local improvement, one way or the other, when there's a road going in like this, everybody's going to be included in one way, shape, or form. The best way that we can do it is to try to expand this district, make it larger, so the hit isn't nearly as hard. I, I have to say something though, Sarah. When you say that, I mean no disrespect, but about a district boundary should not be designed to lessen the blow. It needs a district boundary is for benefit, not let's make it as large as we can so that it just 
lessens the blow. I don't disagree with you, but I will tell you that in our own ordinances, it stipulates what the district boundary should be. And because yes, because you guys are you guys are designating this as a corridor, that is why you're trying to extend it when when it's not considered a corridor road, it wouldn't be going all the way to wall. So the comp plan also designates Nelson Drive as a collector. And to be honest, I would disagree with that. To say that again? Nelson Drive in the, in the area in the comp plan is, act, is classified as a collector. Pretty sure that's Nelson. So that's it third, is. Fourth. Nelson, right, Nelson? Am I pretty sure. Because mm -hmm. I got it wrong the first time, so I want to make sure no, that I'm I got it right. pretty sure. And I would, I would disagree with that, to be honest. I don't see that as a collector. So what do we do here? Because issues were had, the reason we're even in this room tonight is because the original proposed district was shot down. It was made smaller. We had a lot of outcry, as you've stated, that people were concerned about that. So we're responding and saying, all right, let's take a look at this again. Let's revisit this district. Let's do what, to the best of our ability, is fair. I didn't want to be in three improvement districts. I certainly don't want to be in the fourth. But unfortunately, <coughs> we're not able, as a council, to completely stop the growth in this region, especially with all the land purchasing that's been going on. I'm open to suggestions. I'm saying take the road further south and run it into it where he's going to be making money on in his development. Like the Osgood, they built the golf course, they built the road all the way around it, put houses on it. It's going to be pretty much just like that right there, minus the golf course. If there's money, he's not doing this for free. He's making money on it. He can pay for his own road going in there. Yeah. Divide it up between his lots. We've already done our, our share for this town. We've given you taxes for 35 years. And we're going to continue doing it. We don't need much more specials on top of it. Jack, you've answered our questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. The original developer that had wanted to, to start that up 30 some years ago, I was on a city council at that time, and he came in with the idea that uh, the city was going to put in the streets, the sewer and the water, the lights, everything, and he was just going to come in and build houses. That's the way they do it in California, he said. Well, we had an engineer that came out and did some testing on that land and found out that the water table was so stinking high that they told him you would not be able to put a, a house with a basement in there. Even, even four feet down into the ground would be dangerous. So after that was said and done, he backed away from it. So now it's, now it's back open again. So does the new developer know that this is going to happen? Jack, Jack, Jack. Jack, I'm assuming you guys have taken, done some soil samples out there. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I guess uh, regarding the placement of the, we have taken geotechnical samples throughout the entire development. Um, regarding the placement of 8th, if I may approach again, um, like we talked about, 8th had been planned on uh, for a long time. These plats here all dedicated the north half of 8th. Um, it's an extension of 8th, the only road that ties into County Road 17. 8th um, should have been built out when those developments to the north were built. Those are currently dead ends, and so that makes the most sense for the location of eighth mm -hmm. and uh so you know i guess the it um i guess the the folks back here want a free road uh because they were here first i mean i think the the road is going to benefit them equally no as it will with it, as it will with the new we new developer drive through that neighborhood to get to their house that's paying for it we have to drive through the light industrial to get to eight <coughs> people that don't know how to drive down on a construction company. Yeah, when you're building all these houses, you're just increasing the safety risk for the neighborhoods that don't have sidewalks, and you're going to wreck the roads, and then we're going to have to pay for them. My neighborhood doesn't have sidewalks. 
The road right next to my <coughs> house was constructed out of concrete, and I've seen nothing but concrete trucks, moving trucks. All kinds of fun stuff. We have asphalt, not concrete. I'm look on 4th Street. I could almost hide my motorcycle in the divots over there. It's okay. It's horrible. All right, so we've had we've had conversation last night. I get it. Look where you guys are coming from. We still need yeah, to come up with a district it's tonight. Good. It's great feedback. And I appreciate That's the feedback, what we guys. Hear. Yes. But there'll be a time to, if depending on how this district turns out and who's involved in it, that there'll be a protest period that can happen with it as well. But we're still going to need to figure out what we want to do here for a northern <coughs> district boundary, where we're going to land on that, and a southern district boundary <coughs> for well, that matter. True. Yep. And so, Mr. Mayor, for, for the council's discussion, too, if, if the plan is to change this boundary to make it larger, because <coughs> this district has all already been created right. with a district boundary, so if, if the plan is to change that boundary, my recommendation is that there's a motion to dissolve the previous <coughs> district and then create a new district. And part of that creating the new district is setting the, the boundary, the district boundary, and then naming uh, the district based on what improvements are going to be associated with that. I know there's been some discussion about some project components possibly being taken out and so if that's going to change anything with this district we should rename it as well. So before it was water, sewer, storm and street improvement district 2023-2. There is no water component obviously it's just going to be sewer, storm and street improvement district. Okay, well, up there it's not on this. I was just wondering what had changed. Um, so just know that too in making your decision that if the plan is to change that, that district boundary uh, to make it larger, we're going to have to dissolve the first district, create a new one, and then we'll start the process over to afford uh, property owners that letter that was given previously, hold the informal landowner meeting, engage with the public again on uh, project components, details, and then come back um, through that, that regular process of directing the engineer to prepare the report, approve the report, direct plans and specs, approve plans and specs, et cetera. So. so in a nutshell, you're saying that we would have to nullify the petition for improvement since... If you're dissolving the district, the petition's still there. But says we're gonna be we starting would have over. to publish like a resolution of necessity. Depending on how large that yeah, district large. is, right. if, if that we went with yeah. this, uh, northern if that wall petition avenue. for improvements does not cover a majority of the area within the new district, then it would it would not be a valid petition for improvements, and we'd have to go through the, the that process. Yes. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we Good. were following that process. Good catch. So, what? go ahead, sir. The what is the majority stake here? Since we're looking at it, but as north or south? How much property, or what's the? Depends on the size of the district. Yeah. <coughs> so if you went all the way to Wall, I don't think the Sparks. The north would be the majority base. The north would the be the majority. Mm -hmm. They have a chance of petitioning out at that point. Well, no, they they would be they would provide their objection letters, and so. You know, previously there's been discussion on on this project not going through before because. Uh, there were objections to the project. Those objection letters did not equal a majority of the property. So that project could have proceeded, but the council at that time decided not to go forth with it. And I was, I was here for that one, so I remember Same. that project, yeah. So each was, was it a necessary project at that time? Yeah, it was, well, at that time it was just the, the truck route. And, and it was, that's what was proposed, was a truck route to divert traffic at that time so around the city. All the roads. At that yeah. time it lacked the project driver. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now the project driver is the Sparks edition. Yeah. If you okay. move the district to Wall, how far south does it go then? All the way to 100th, no. Whereas before it only went to the north end of Vistos. North end what? The north end of Vistos. Go ahead and pull the that up, show, park. show them. So previously, everything <coughs> Was Industrial Drive the boundary previously? No, it was the north line. It was the, the north line. The, the tree okay. line area. <coughs> and what was the western boundary of the of our current district? 17. 17. 17. I'm sorry, east. I'm in east. Um, Drain 27. The, the, the half mile or the quarter line east of Drain 27. So roughly Drain 27. Okay. And then it went up the wall 
over to the edge of Prairie View and 4th Street and then up and then so across and then, sorry. Isn't there another map? I looked at this over There's the weekend. The first one. Go, to the first Go to the first map. One. That one. There. So before, if you could highlight on there, Jace, yep. all the way across park. It's the black heavy line. There it is. Okay, so the yeah, black heavy line delineates where it was previously. So the red line, the red and white line shows what was originally <coughs> the, the dark black line across <coughs> the park shows where it was. The rest of it stayed the same. The north boundary just got dropped down. So those are the two the two districts that were one that was proposed, the other one was what was accepted and modified as modified. The black line was the yes. the accepted one. Yes. The red one was the other. We does that original. Go all, does that go all the way down to a hundredth or no it doesn't. The original one didn't. It went just to the north boundary line of Vistos. And so the new proposed one would, does go all the way? Would go down to a hundred. Do we have a map of that? No, you don't. Okay. Because if you were to follow, if you were to deem it as a collector, then it would go. There it is. It essentially would follow. Essentially. Yeah. The that's new red box? The, the red box is the arterial. <coughs> they happen to be red. So, yeah. That's what, it, that's what it would look like. So. And we've okay. sliced it and diced it and cut it down. What happens if we don't put a road there? As far as eight. Do they have two ways out for their development? Well, you would have to have the block. Does Apple Orchard have two ways out of their development? No. That, that was done Again, before the this past. council week. We have to start doing things right at some point. Well, isn't yeah. that a beautiful development? That we, regardless, we have to start doing something you can do correct. It just like that, just like that right there. But at some point, you need to start doing things correctly. We'll put a <coughs> For the trees to the south west, then, and have it go in and do a big loop on there. The city of Fargo does it all the time. 25th Street's got one loop on one side, and it's blocked off by big major avenues. Oh, it's a little residential area in there. Go across the street, it's the same thing. So, so the loop would only still have one way out, right? If you look at the map up here? Yeah, there's a lot of developments that way. Understood, but at some point, you need to start doing things correctly. Would you agree? I didn't say, I don't think it's incorrect, correct. mister. I don't. So, but, but for right now, it would only be that access out. What about the one to the south? <coughs> Luther and, and Sparks. That's part of a separate project that's not, that actually got removed from the docket tonight. Correct? Who don't buy rules and create all those down there? They go in and do a loop. Don't tell me they, could, they got enough space. They put the one and have two in there, put it in a row, going up 17. Mm -hmm. Or over you bet you're down to 100. There would be more than one way in there if you wanted. All right. Okay, so. You don't need to go through ours. So, what do you guys want to do about the boundaries then? It was you never supposed to be a road, so it shouldn't be a road. Do you want to keep the boundaries as they currently are, or do you guys want to dissolve that one and expand it to the north? And if so, then where's that line? Jim's got a proposal on the board here that we talked about before, or we keep what we've got. Understood. So right now we have, the way I look at it, we have two options. We we keep the district the way it is, mm -hmm. or we go back and expand it. Yeah, is we that, dissolve what we have right now and then ex bring it back. Does anybody disagree with, with that? With the two options? The two yeah. options. Well, right. I, I mean, I think we could acknowledge <coughs> that it's a local improvement road. And, uh, Cut out the go back. To, I mean, original district lines would cut out the commercial property and the Cheyenne Trailer Park. That that's what I came up with. That wasn't the case on the original proposed district boundaries, was it? No. No, it wasn't. All right. Thoughts? Or you want to move it somewhere else? Where the current black line is. Which is a fun part. You guys want to? I, I've always, and and maybe I'm the bad one here, but I, because I've been in so many improvement districts, following the ordinance has benefited when something like this comes about. Whether or not we all agree roads needed or not, having a larger district, we can always make the district smaller. Our special assessment committee 
can always step benefits. They can listen to all the public input. They can take all your letters and say, okay, this person doesn't get as much benefit as this person does and vice versa, right? They have that power and they can make those recommendations to us. We don't make those recommendations at council. That's why that committee exists. They have a unique set of skills and a unique way of weighting and benefiting properties. So in my mind, a larger district is more beneficial. Well, the other thing too is that the council does have checks and balances with the special assessment committee too. So we bought, there's a last set of eyes that take a look at it as well. So um, I guess, yeah, my recommendation would be that we have the bigger district and then let the special assessment committee do their job. But, Other leave opinions? Do a few guys. Jeff? I, I understand the point Sarah's making. Um, I, I know how tough it is for the committee, uh, Alan Martin, I know Brad. Um, having a smaller district ties their hands. I get it. I, I truly do get it that, you know, if you're going to shift burden around, you have less less options when you have a smaller district. It also It also, to me, makes it seem a lot more uh, exact, though, um, where they, they don't have that option to move a lot of the money around. Um, it's going to be, it is what it is. The, the, the boundary all the way down to 100th um, and all the way up to wall, um, just because we're going to try to include 8th now as uh, that, that, that main road at the, the half mile marker. Um, the only other option I could see would try to be um, making Luther get all the way out to County Road 17 and whether that's talking to um, PetraServe and finding out if they're willing to to do something to allow us to get out to 17. If um, I may interject, they go were ahead. just here, they said they didn't even want the land anymore. I understand that, and that's kind of why I made that point. Well, right. <laughs> so, well, so, based on their special assessment, which was a very heavy load. Right. What What would we do on the east end, then, with El Dorado coming into that U-shape? I'm just... Uh, and that's, that Jim and I were talking about the seven, and we, we don't have a plan for that yet, I think was what we agreed upon on that. Yeah, it's, um, <coughs> El Dorado is all platted and it's all correct. Um, single uh, parceled out. It's all single family parceled out, so yeah, there's no access. Across the drain, no. And actually, this port, the portion, I'm sorry, I can't drive, uh, show, so go over by the 17 there. So that area, that little sliver there is actually being proposed for stormwater management for that whole area through El Dorado. So we wouldn't be able to get across the drain and across a stormwater pond in the future. So Which um, side? Up, what's that? On Which the side? East side. On the east side now. On the east side. Good to know. And the area where there's that orange line coming across, there already is an existing sanitary sewer force main easement and, and pipe from the St. Ben's Sewer Association. So for that to fall in road right away would be good. And it's already there? The pipe's yeah. already in there, yeah. It, it, it's actually, I guess, a little bit solid there, but. So less cost, to too. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't really do anything besides put a road there. Yeah. Okay. All right, what do you guys want to do? I said the first thing was, do we want to dissolve what we currently have? Yes or no? If it's a no, then we move along. So even if we would uh, move forward with what we currently have, after we get the estimates, or not the estimates, after we actually get the um, the bids back, we still have a chance to review that before we move forward. Is that correct? Yeah. You, yeah. Whenever we have bids, they come to the city council for review and, and approval. But and that we haven't for, even been directed to prepare plans. And that could be for either district, whether it's this. The, the smaller version of the district or the larger, we get the bids back, we review as you whether you want to move forward or not. Yeah, the council has yeah, that. Because yeah. it's going to be the same project, it's just... Well, we have to discuss that too. Is right. Where does this one stop? 
I think we're all in agreement it starts at Nelson, on the east side of Nelson. But where does it stop? I'm, I'm for the proposal. Go to the other map, Jace, please. I think that we did right by taking this Nelson one. and a few of the other roads that were included originally in this project out. I see the methodology behind that. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm hearing the feedback, and I, I think that's fair. I think that the L is needed, and I like the idea of having the blue portion in a future phase when it's needed versus right now. So we've chopped this down by, I mean, two thirds, right? Um, we know that there's potentially another district that will be in play with a lift station, a much larger district over to the west, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you I, I think we it? found a, a pretty happy medium. Um, I mean, our job is to set the district boundary, mm -hmm. not necessarily cut and chop and all this fun stuff, but we're doing it, right? Because we take this very seriously. I'm okay with what's shown up there and all the work that's gone into it. Which, going all the way? Well, are you are you talking about the district boundary? Or are you talking about this road here? The the road uh, itself, I think, makes sense. I think we've done the right thing by removing portions of it and saying, okay, that'll be in a future phase or whatnot. Unfortunately, the way I see it, right or wrong, I do see this as a necessity. I struggle with a proposal on Luther just because we don't have the connectivity. And I personally so, like to start with a bigger district and then let's get the feedback, let's get the public input. We can always make the district smaller, we can always adjust, but we can't ever make it bigger, right? Short of dissolving it. You know. Short of, well, restarting. That's restarting. why we're here in the first place. Right. So, mm -hmm. I, I know not everybody wins in this. I know I would like to see a larger portion of the project completed, and I think some others would like to see that too, but in lieu of what we've heard here tonight and the feedback we've received, I'm okay with a more meet in the middle approach. I know you don't hear me say that very often. <coughs> so what do you want to do then? What's, what's the meet in the middle I, I'm okay with what I see here. Okay, so we leave with it. With this change, not the whole, not the other slide. This change. So Nelson out, taking other things out, leaving the district larger, and empowering our assessment committee to really take a hard look at this with the feedback and determine where the benefit lies. So the district boundary would basically be the section of land. Wall, veterans, 1700 would be your boundaries. And what is reflected in red on the screen there is the scope of the project like the boundaries of the actual project itself. Eighth from Nelson to fifth, and then fifth down <coughs> to that corner of the lagoons there. I think so, and you know. Yeah, just making sure I clear clearly know where. But we've gotten some good feedback about traffic here. We've gotten some good feedback about buffering. I, I think that there's ways to get creative on how we address that. I know that the street that went next to me, I mean, it's a huge street. I. I <laughs> I can't believe the amount of traffic and the zooming that goes by me, but they were kind enough to put some trees in there. They went above and beyond with speed limit signs and whatnot. <coughs> they have to present, you know, some speed tables or something like that. I mean, we have options that we can control some of that. I'm the only one speaking right now, so I'm okay with the changes proposed after you went and met with several of us on council here. I think that a lot has been taken into consideration. It's not an easy decision, and not one that necessarily makes me popular, but if I have to look at it and be fair knowing what's coming, I think it's fair as a starting point. I think we can do more. Okay. Jeff, what's your thoughts? OK. 
Yeah, obviously we have uh, two district boundaries to decide between. Um, I, like I said, I understand the smaller boundary ties the hands of our, our special assessment committee. Um, and I know uh, it's tough to have faith in them that they're not going to hit you guys with assessments. I, I get it 100%. My, my housing development had it happen about a year and a half ago. I get it. Um, this, this project has to be renamed to remove the, just the water component out of it? It won't get renamed. It'll just be the Got district it. number that changes. Okay. Because there's the water crossings on Nelson third, or third and fourth. I mean, the, the majority of this project should, yes, be going to the, um, the Sparks Edition and also the, the larger city lots. Um, they were very unfairly, lightly hit with the proposed assessments. That, that should have never went out. Along um, with the commercial. Correct, that and, is and we do need in to residential. Yeah. We um, do need to address yeah. that. We're revisiting that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we're all in agreement on that. Yes. Yeah. Stephanie. I mean, I think I've said my my thoughts on it. I don't I don't agree with the project scope um, down fifth or beyond fourth, um, and I don't. It's local to me. I, I don't agree with even including the commercial and the Cheyenne trailer park in the district. All right, Naomi, anything else you want to add? Okay. No. All right, so what do we want to do? So we've got two options here. We can keep what we currently have, move along, or we change this. We're going to change it, and we're going to have to look for a motion to dissolve the current district. Understood. I want to ask, Al, you're here tonight. I want to ask you a question. Okay. Smaller district, does that tie your hands too much? Well, you know where I am. I just, I need you to be honest. Just Yeah, and I told you before. Dump the special assessment period and and put them let the developers front end the cost of all of these things. I understand. Tonight I don't have that option though. Well, it's about time that the city took a look at that. I understand. Yeah, but you asked, so that's why I'm telling you. Thank you. But if we had a your point about a larger a larger district gives us a little bit more navigating room would be I I think would be helpful. But I, I don't want to speak for Brad nor Mark. You ask my opinion. That's what I'm but thank, thank you for asking. Okay. Yes. There's a hand up in the back. Okay, Jack, go ahead. If the district stays with its existing boundaries, the properties in between the park and Eighth are going to be hit really hard. Would it also be Yes. To what extent? They're, they're the driver of the project. They're going to be at least one time greater than any other residential property there. At least that. So take it, multiply it by itself. It's, they are the driver of the project. They're nice. going to get hit harder. And I understand. And that, that's why I asked Al, you know, I mean, that we're really tying his hands by having a very tight <coughs> district. I, I get it. And there's not much he can do to move things around. I don't see what's benefiting when you, we've lived out here for 30 years on these streets and we've never got a problem getting anywhere. 
I don't see a benefit for it at all that's going to make me want to pay more in taxes for that. I'd rather wait and spend when you guys next rebuild our road because when you guys did 5th Street, 6th Street, 7th Street on, nobody went in off 88th Avenue to build those houses. They all came down 4th Street over Park Drive. There's no stop sign there, just a yield sign. Everybody wheeled around there and then you guys let them build their houses. Once he got almost done over there, you guys opened up 88th Avenue and said they could drop down into them. Because apparently you need two ways in and out of a place nowadays. But until it was almost done being built, that 88th Avenue was closed off. There was no way to get in. They ran down our streets, took life off our street. We're going to have to pay for that. No one's going to... Their sparks ain't going to come up and say, here, here's some money for you guys' street. Do you want the street improvements on your streets to be included in this district? I don't want to be part of this. I don't care if anybody builds on it. If they do, they can come in off 17th, take a boat across 27 for all I care. I don't see I don't see a reason that's going to benefit anybody on 3rd Street or 4th Street to have a, that street get put in at all. It's going to benefit the commercial guys down there and the new development. And that new development is going to use 3rd and 4th Street as fever streets coming down from the Wall Avenue. And the first time they hit one of the kids on that third or fourth street, somebody's going to pay for it. They already come down fourth street at 50 miles an hour. And so much. But we can't get a stop sign at the intersection of Park and Fourth. Or the sidewalk finish from Park to Fifth. We've so to have to go we have to discuss. Guys, we're not talking about that tonight. We're just focusing on this. All right. That could be brought up at another time, but not tonight. What we're talking about here right now is whether we're gonna, how we're going to lay out this district boundary. So, one more time here, guys. We're not going to keep this going all night long. You make up your mind whether we're going to keep the boundary we do right now, or do we change it? <coughs> we want to hear a motion if we want to dissolve the district. If not, then we're going to move along. We in favor of keeping it then. Okay. Moving ahead. All right. Moving. We'll move on then. We'll keep it as is, Jim, as it stands right now. Do you need me to make a motion? Unless Jim? somebody wants to make a motion otherwise. You want to do what? Keep it. As it currently sits right as now. As it currently sits right now. That's on park. Park South to east of County Road 17, west of Drain 27. Essentially, minus this <coughs> hash out line where this new dark red line is, and then. Yeah, where the dark line, dark red set. Okay. All right, let's move along and move on to number. Can I have you get the lights for me? Don't we have to do we have to get the post or not? Go ahead and if you're, if you're changing, if you're not changing, we're not changing anything. Do we need to direct him to? Well, I'm not. All right. We don't have to motion it. But the, just let's all just talk about this before we just move on. There's <laughs> no, nothing is changing. Nothing's changing. Right. Your <coughs> district is yeah. staying the same. Um, so I don't know what your motion would be, hmm. as far as having to do a motion. Um, where are we at in this process? On the agenda, it has um, review of amended preliminary engineering report. That's the discussion. That am I reading that wrong? Yeah. yeah. Reading it right, but if we. It was a continuation from the last a continuation meeting. Of the last one. So have they approved the report? Are we ready for them to approve the report? There's, there's because the, the report next, I believe, has been re has been approved, but we have not been directed to prepare plans and specs. So if you're not changing anything with the boundary, then the next step would be to direct the engineer to prepare plans and specs. I, I don't know that we, did we approve the preliminary engineering report? I thought that we had a discussion last we brought week, it back but we didn't vote to approve it. Technically, the engineering report was originally approved. A while back, however, we brought it back for discussion right. because council had concerns of it. Basically, it was aggressive, aggressive to have. I know, but, but kind of so we brought of, it back. Kind of out of order. Yeah, right? Don't yeah. Still need so to we are bringing it back. Taking the two projects separately. No, if we keep the original district, then the yeah, district is irrelevant. Of, in there. I know, but don't we need to make sure that we were voting to get rid of? that other project out of there? I will bring a report back to you guys. Oh. For, I will have some discussions with, I know there are some concerns with that. What we did was we were going to approve it with the public input comments. So, 
I can bring it, bring it back to you guys, and we can go over the specifics at that time. Because I know that some of you have some comments on the specifics of it, and I'd like to specifically we should meet on, on, on this one, just to make sure. But the district itself can be as it is, and then we can amend the report to take out Nelson at 8. We never did get a decision on how far we're going. We got a recommendation to go all the way over to Fifth and Allen. I don't know if that's if we how we want to handle that. Because I'd like to present something that's accurate to what mm -hmm. what you guys are thinking. So if I guess Mr. Mayor, if it's all right with you, could we discuss the termination of that? Is it going to be a fifth? One of them. You, fourth. You could you could say prepare plans and specs and the extent of the plans and specs to be approved. Could do that. Well, I just, or you could I take just, I or just have just a feeling that. Do, can I bring a scope back, maybe? Like an overall master plan type thing? I, I don't know. I just I just have a feeling there's some. We could bring it back. on the same page. And I just want to make sure that I'm pushing We're, right we're not on the same page. No. We could. One idea is we could. Jim can work up a scope with options of what plans and specs to prepare. And at the next meeting, then you could discuss you plans and specs. Pre discuss preparing plans and specs. And we talk about the limits of the project. Yes. When you say limits, what do you mean? 4th Street. Okay. Or 5th Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we, we go from that. Yeah, my. Yes. Yeah, I don't think we have consensus on, on that. Um, I know. The, the city I, council did not take any action at your last meeting. I know we didn't. I, I mean, looked. we had a discussion on it. So it I don't was, think we've approved, approved the preliminary so, engineer. So the discussion we, was on the comments that were received at the, at the informal landowner meeting, and then the mayor tabled it so the engineer could provide maps that we went over tonight. So the action would be of the engineering report was amending the comments into the engineering report. Amending the public input comments. <coughs> and it gets us back synced up. So we With amended those comments. That's this amended report. That needs to occur. Right? That we were looking at yes. tonight? Yes. And now we're that going. We receive from the district. And now we're going back? No. We're not dissolving that district. Correct. Right. So we, you were presented with the comments at the last meeting. As those were tabled for the information provided today. So nothing has been changed. You could approve the report with the comments similar to what was done with the investor. So yes, so the action item to what they were referring to before is yes, you will need a motion tonight to approve the plan, the amended report with the comments. And that's similar to what you did for you betcha. So the action item would be a motion to approve the preliminary engineer's report, adding in the landowner comments. And what mm -hmm. does the scope of that project entail that we will be approving tonight? Part of that amended plan, it could be, if you guys want to want to change the the scope and remove some of those items, could be in your motion to incorporate the comments and to. Um, That's what I would like. Yeah. To okay. to remove the project points that that you referenced, the extension of Eighth to the East, and then uh, remove Nelson Drive. Um, so if we do that and keep the smaller district. The dollars go up, and we are outside of our ordinance, the boundaries of our ordinance. Is the way it's defined, yes. Special assessment policy. What business do we have doing this? I want to know. Doing what? Deviating from the recommendations. From the initial recommendation? And because we had a discussion, at least in my opinion, that this is a local, this is a local improvement. I mean, the, the district wasn't created and then we voted to change it. The district was presented to us. We reviewed it and created our district. I would have gone further today to dissolve and take out the commercial and the Cheyenne uh, trailer park properties myself. Um, to, that's why. To try to answer your question from my standpoint, we were asked to create a district, okay? And we created a district based on what we thought was appropriate for right. the project. And we got a bunch of feedback from people, several people who yep. are here, 
that the assessments in that smaller district were more than they could bear. Which is why we went back and said, okay. And, and that's why we started to move <coughs> some of the stuff out of that project so right. that we, we could get that project to fall more as far as what we outlined for the district to be and had a separate project for the sewer and the sewer lift station that would also pick up the small part of 8th Street to Nelson between uh, 8th and, excuse me, between Nelson and County Road 17. Right, <coughs> which I, I didn't disagree with. Agreed, yep. So to, to your point though, I, I will, you and I can talk offline to try to figure out, okay, what are we gonna do to try to figure this out? Well, it's not gonna be fair to these, all of the people that came in and expressed concerns. To, sorry. There was only like, there's not very many houses on Park Avenue. Um, most of that is, uh, there's like five houses maybe. How would you feel if you were in this little square? No, I get that, but that's what I'm saying is maybe somehow they can come up with something <coughs> to where maybe they wouldn't even be included in that. But again, that's where the special assessment committee comes right. in right. and makes that de notion. That's exactly. not because there's not very many houses right now. Right. We're piecing and again, parceling we're way too much. Yep. We're just deep diving here. We should we leave be. the big district. We have others that make those decisions, and there's a reason for it. We're having a lot of preliminary discussions on things that we should be talking about at this point. Our point here is to talk about the district. How big does that need to be to start? And, and if, if we get his bids back and it's so far out of whack, we kill it and we start over. <clears throat> and I understand the ramifications of that. There's a lot of ramifications because there's a lot of money being spent on engineering reports and everything else. I mean, these, this is taxpayer dollars. Understood. We've had Why Jim, not? Jim spent two weeks. On, uh, Chris Gilliland, uh, commercial property owner. Um, so all that I'm trying to figure out here is, you know, I have those two letters that I have to disclose when I do a personal financial statement, a bank loan, whatever I got going on. I'm, I'm here, back here. I drove back from my brothers from Easter to be here today, just to, you know, hear some things. I just, I don't feel like we're any further than we were last week. On addressing it I know that it sounds like it might be commissioners and engineers down the road and assessments down the road that might be able to answer my question you know one to two years from now but your concern though initially I believe was the amount of the assessment that you got in that letter correct right that I have to disclose it could Understood. be as high as that but again so. we have to go through a process here we are reviewing that policy and we'll probably be changing it it just isn't gonna happen okay. tomorrow morning we understand what kind of Bind it puts what that it. does to a person or anybody well, exactly. where, where where is that required or what's it required for uh, if you know that there's a potential of anything that could affect your income an assessment of six hundred thousand dollars on a property that I have so you have it over 20 years plus interest okay that will negatively affect me or any of the people back here that have property right so when I go to borrow money or get a line of credit, I have to disclose that to a bank when you have to borrow money to run a business. So it's in terms of banking, because I, I looked at, when, so, you, when you brought it up last so time, I looked at it as far as the real estate disclosure, because I thought that's what you're referring to, so, so that, I want to make so sure. That, so your letter that you send out next time, put a total dollar amount and put down that you'll be assessed it in some manner. But when you put down a fixated number, I have to go by that. Even if it says preliminary on the on the page, it could be that much. Could be, but then again, it couldn't. It may not be. They, they people just that borrow your money want to know. Okay, just yeah, I'm telling you that's the way it. Right. This was, again, I'll reiterate. We were asked to do this a long time ago to start sending these out so people had a heads right. up what was coming so we could have these discussions. Right. I mean, we're it, kind of damned just, if we do, yeah. we're damned if I we know, don't. I'm right just, now, I want you to be aware of how it's affecting. Understood, other people. but again. That's all I have. Thank you. So, Lucas, um, 
So I, I asked that question because I was concerned. Like I don't, the city doesn't want to be doing this to everyone by sending out letters. So it, it, it is catch twenty two, like the mayor said. Is is residents would like to know that that estimated preliminary proposed amount, and at the same time, if it's going to affect people negatively financially. Then city council needs to be concerned about right. sending these letters. Right. We look at this a little bit more because that's not that's not the intent. And I, I looked it up as far as a real estate disclosure because I thought that's what he was referring to is is if you're trying to sell the property. It's not Are something that. Yep, I get it now. That's why I asked. I Thanks, Juan. Wanted to know, um, and so it, it is a consideration that going forward um, we should all think about with these letters. Yes. All right, guys. We've spent over an hour on this one topic. We do need to move along. So what are we going to do here? Make a decision, and let's move on. Do we need to make a kind of motion? Right now? No. That's what I'm asking, Jim. Do you want us to do? You want us to do anything with this right now, or do we sit on it for two weeks? And we have another discussion on this. After we've had some more discussion with the council, members. I mean, your your options are back to the same thing. Of if, if you're keeping the district as is, you can have a motion to approve the preliminary engineer's report with the comments incorporated, and changing the project components. That can be one action item. You could have another action item to dissolve the district and create a new district with a new boundary, or you could do nothing, and then we could have this hour-long conversation again in two weeks. Okay, so we want to do it. Well, I think it's time to take some action. I agree. We've had plenty of feedback. We've had plenty of opportunity. My opinion may be different than others, but I see no reason that we wouldn't dissolve the original district because it's far too detrimental in my mind. And I may be outvoted here and I'm prepared for that. Do you want to make a motion on that one, Sarah? I will, and we'll find out very quickly if I'm outnumbered. So I will make a motion to dissolve the previous district and give the leverage to the special assessment committee as needed. Okay. So I'm, partial, I'm partial to the changes that we made. I think it's a, I think it's a happy medium. Okay. Sarah makes a motion to dissolve the current district uh, in potential favor of a new one. Can I get a second on that? One more time, can I get a second on that one? Well, if, if we make a motion, I mean, we're not, it'd be a second motion as to what the new district would be. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I will second that. Okay. Deputy does a second. So you're dissolving the district, is that what you're saying? I will make a motion to dissolve the current district. <coughs> so we have a first, we have a second on that. I'm going to do a roll call vote on this one. Sarah? Aye. Naomi? Okay. Aye. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm abstaining. Okay. What? what? What do you want me to do? I don't even know what you guys want me to do anymore. The, the council motion previously to allow okay, you Okay, fine. To I. Okay. Stephanie? Aye. Okay, Jeff? Aye. Nate? Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, the district is dissolved. Now we need to create a new one. All right. So where are we gonna, where's the new one gonna be? I don't know if we're all settled on the larger district. <coughs> That's what I would propose to go with the large district. And the special assessment committee worry about it. I don't, I otherwise don't. we're getting, we're, we're almost going beyond what we should be doing. I don't so. disagree. Jeff, what's your thoughts on this? Feedback on a new district. Feedback on a new district. Yep. That's fair. For making a new district. Mm -hmm. um, I. So, go ahead. Sorry, uh, just wanted to bring up. You could create a new district at the next meeting, being that we had a lot of discussion about it. Um, and you had an audience where you've had quite a few folks already leave. That's your call, but I just want to bring that up. Do you want to continue that part and create your district tonight, or do you want to do it at another meeting? I'd like to have some thoughts so, so that we can, yep. I, I, even if we don't create the new district tonight, 
we have a direction to go in so that we continue yep. forward progress because right now we have zero direction we're all over the board yep i don't think you should do it today because i think when all of them left they thought that it was done you guys made it seem that way i thought it was done too i'm fine with that if you want to wait you just table this for two weeks again and come back do we want to add some comments here for what we everyone would like and what they see it uh, yeah i'm perfectly willing to do that i i voted to dissolve the district because i would like to redraw the district um and change uh the district removing the commercial properties along cast 17 in the cheyenne trailer park bringing it on the west side of that property along park and back it can go it can go to 57 and then north of the the southern district being what it was before because to me it's primarily a local improvement but we don't usually do that it's not up to us to determine who gets special assessed and who doesn't and so you cut them out of that district now we're gerrymandering us exactly no, we shouldn't be well they that. don't they don't even their their lots front cast 17 um they they don't they're never gonna Anyway, yeah. but it's not up to you, you asked for, my, you asked for right. my opinion, and that, that is no. what my opinion is on the district. Right. The, the council's job is to set the district based on recommendation from the city engineer on those properties that they think benefit from the infrastructure. As far as what's actually set for assessments, that is done later on, and the values uh, <coughs> for those assessments are determined later on by the Special Assessment Commission recommended to the City Council. So, Jim, what, before everybody else leaves, um, we've had this talk. Uh, this is where I'm going to need you to explain in detail why or how different areas are benefiting for for us to move forward. Um, to make sure that we're not gerrymandering any lines. We are including areas for a reason based on your professional opinion and make it be known just so, so we don't, and, we and, don't walk ourselves into trouble. So first and foremost, I do view that as a half mile line. And the way that the policy reads, regional street property is located less than or equal to a distance midway between an arterial major collector street project and the next arterial major collector are included within the assessment district. The expanded assessment area is an attempt to recognize the community benefit. So that's something that we have to address is the community benefit of some of these projects. Of arterial major collector streets in which direct access is often restricted to provide greater ability to move traffic. Under this policy, each property within the city will be included in one north-south major collector, which would be you betcha, one north-south arterial, which is the 17 or 57th veterans, one east-west major collector, which I view as 8th, and one east-west arterial street assessment area, which could be the wall or 112. 112th is the county highway, so it would be the wall portion of it. So there's that. <laughs> that starts our boundary and wall in going what we talked about the larger one. Sparks is going to see benefit because they need access from utilities on 3rd Street, 4th Street, and Nelson Drive. There's issues on Nelson or on, on that corridor with drainage, believe it or not. And it's the same with the dead ends on 3rd and 4th Street. You could always be say that if the house in the middle of the street or towards the towards park is on fire, everybody's stuck south of that one and they can't get past. And that's just, we ran into that with the orchard this summer where access was limited and the fire department was very concerned with getting services out into that area. So it's a small area, I understand that, say if it's south of, south of park, but it's, it's it's a, it could happen. There could be that on, on third and fourth. So there's that benefit to it. Um, we plan on putting star, taking storm sewer on Eighth Avenue down to the Sparks Ab, Sparks Pond through you betcha out to Drain Twenty Seven. Right now, there isn't very good drainage in any of that area. Third, fourth, Nelson, you name it, there isn't very good drainage. 
So that's what went through went through my head when, when we was laying this out. And that's why I put that exhibit together that showed you kind of that whole section as a whole. We need to look at it bigger picture. And, and I mean, the, the, the petition that we got, I guess it doesn't really have a distance here. The one I got says, the owner petitions the city of Horace, Cass County, North Dakota, to create an improvement district for the purpose of constructing the following municipal improvements. Civil infrastructure on 8th Avenue South that will provide paved road access to the Sparks Edition, including any necessary improvements therewith, such as roads, curb and gutter, storm sewer, street lighting, and sanitary sewer in accordance with the City of Horace specifications and in accordance with final plans <coughs> of the Sparks Edition here and after called the improvements. So when we get the petition on the staff level, we look at it on the whole. And that's where we look at the third, the fourth, the connectivity, the utility connections the potential for the crossing of the drain and, and all of that. So that's what gets me to where gets me to where we're at. I hope you didn't want pipe sizes and all that. Yeah. Okay. Any more details you want on that? Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right, so what do you guys want to do? Wait till next time? Think about this a little bit more? I think it's only appropriate, like the police said. Yeah, yeah, I'm you had a large piece presence of the audience leave right. uh, with one assumption. But I would also say if we're looking at this too, I would be very careful and hesitant to sit and do any gerrymandering with these things as we go forward because that's not, that's really not our purview. In my book, we take a recommendation unless there's something grossly wrong with it, otherwise I think we stay with what has been recommended. All right, any more comments on this? Okay, Jim, we'll, we'll just uh, regroup on this one in two weeks then, okay? All right, let's move on to number 11, land use ordinance. All right. Jake, <coughs> you can read all 297 pages of this thing, are you? 386. Okay, so yeah, I'm trying to be nice. No, um, Mr. Mayor, members <coughs> of the council, what's before you tonight is the for the second reading of the land use ordinance that's been proposed. A uh, quick little background, I guess, for the record. On February 5th, City Council held a public hearing to receive testimony <coughs> and review the Commission's recommendation and vote whether to approve the first reading of the land use ordinance. Uh, following public hearing and discussion, the City Council voted to approve the first reading of the land use ordinance <coughs> with the following changes, um, which is including your memo. If you want me to read through them, I'm more than happy to do that, but it is, is part of your memo on there. Um, when staff received the final draft back from the consultant shortly after the first reading, uh, it appeared that the previous a previous draft had been used <coughs> to create what was supposed to be the final draft, and several of the prior changes that have been worked through the process <coughs> were incorporated back into the document. So we resent the comprehensive list of changes, including the changes council made on the February 5th meeting back to the consultant to uh, correct. A uh, newly updated data draft was received on March 13th of 2024, and I have gone through every single page and every line item on there uh, to confirm that all the changes were included in there, and they had been. Um, a couple things I would like to point out in this time uh, between the first and second reading, some additional items have come to light that may require some additional discussion during the second reading uh, with the City Council. On March 26, 2024, the Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed a signed variance application which was evaluated under the proposed <coughs> ordinance in anticipation of the new ordinance being completed. Um, the application was for a variance for the height and overall size of the proposed monument sign. Um, I would note the proposed ordinance does take a much more conservative approach or a, an aesthetic focused approach when it comes to signs um, by limiting to what is referred to in the planning world as sign pollution. So it, it does call for smaller signage and trying to kind of eliminate that, that difference, just how a corridor appears in terms of signage. Um, however, recent trends with approvals for sign variants that the city has done uh, would indicate that the city is open to being accommodating for preferred signages, or preferred signage for businesses uh, that are looking to locate within the community. Uh, as a part of the Commission's recommendation, the Commission did ask the City Council to consider amending the proposed sign ordinance to allow for larger monument or freestanding signs uh, to include more flexibility in their design as a part of the second reading discussion. So in, in front of you, I did throw together a proposed amendment um, through that. Uh, the, the one on the left is the current proposal. As you can see, they are, are much smaller signs. 
and then the proposed amendment throughout there. I'm not recommending any changes for uh, signage throughout residential districts. I mainly because the goal is not to inundate residential districts with exist or more signage or unnecessary. And same with urban residential as well. Um, there is a slight increase with the 1776, the old town and the mixed use. I'm not proposing that those go as high as your traditional commercial and industrial, mainly because the intent of those districts are, are walkable. They're meant to be viewed from the pedestrian level and not necessarily from a vehicle passing by. Uh, so those have been increased slightly to just accommodate for a little more flexibility. The major change you'll notice is through the commercial light industrial one and light or industrial one and industrial two um, would be proposed to mirror our current ordinance which has a maximum height of 35 feet for a uh, freestanding sign and increase the maximum area of feet for all freestanding signs to 150 square feet. I included a third table on the bottom of that that basically breaks down a bunch of signs throughout the metro, several of them including in Horus of what their overall signage is or signage height is as well as their sign area square footage. 35 is in far excess of some of the other uh, many of the signs throughout the metro, however, with the amount of variances that we did receive with the current or, or the current ordinance, I would, I guess, I would be open to including that <coughs> flexibility of that 35 feet, um, just to try and eliminate that process. So, that is one thing for for consideration, further discussion um, from you guys. And I'll say lastly, even though there was a new thing that just came up today. Um, topic of, of accessory dwelling units within the city of Horus. Um, I would note that just, and this will play to the, the wind turbine conversation too, but the part of the RFP for this um, ordinance was to bring the city's zoning ordinance into current trends, into uh, best practices for planning, <coughs> how things are, are changing in the planning profession. And then part of that is, is accessory dwelling units. As a part of combating rising housing costs, um, We've been working to understand the concerns surrounding these types of uses and we're proposed to the council an amendment to the land use ordinance, which currently outright permits an accessory dwelling to modify that to be approved or permitted via conditional use permit. This would still have an avenue for private property owners to build accessory dwelling units if they so choose. We're also implementing a process in which additional conditions can be implemented by the commission and council informing the residents and allowing for public testimony throughout those public hearing processes. Uh, but again, I would encourage conversation from you guys or what your thought process is on accessory dwelling units throughout there. And the last thing that was brought up by Mr. Hoffman today, and I talked to Councilmember Landstrom a little bit uh, this after, I guess, morning, uh, about uh, small scale wind turbines within the city of Horus. So similar to the lines of the RFP and bringing things in best practice, not to mention the city of Horus actually has had history of combating or not really having regulation but having property, property owners trying to do uh, alternative energy sources or, or, wind, tur or wind turbines uh, to the point of almost litigation, Lucas? It was filed. It was filed, filed. <laughs> on that. So this was a kind of a response to that, that growing trend of, of all the buzzwords, sustainability, <coughs> self-sufficiency, um, the, the green movement, if you will. Uh, well also trying to provide standards for the city in the event that someone tried to bring forward a, a wind turbine in that in the in that fashion um, i know the question by mr hoffman was about how how tall can they be so obviously i i'm not a, a wind turbine expert but they have a certain blade height so from the tip of, of the blade to the ground the minimum height for 15 is 15 feet, and that's for functionality of, of the blade that they have. Um, they have a maximum height of 50 from the ground surface. Um, one thing I would note out, though, is the way that the setback is structured for that. So for <coughs> how, how high it is, let's say I have a 20-foot tall wind turbine that I was going to do, or some alternative energy um, means or method through there my setback would have to be equal to the height of that structure. So if I have a 20 foot tall structure, I have a setback from my rear property line of 20 feet, it was set back from my side property lines of 20 feet, and it's not permitted in the front yard setback of that. And that eliminates a lot of the, the new properties based on the height that they would have because there's not enough room to meet all of those setbacks, otherwise you're landing right on top of the house. So this realistically, I think, was designed for the larger 
uh, lots, which was what the city went to toe to toe with a few years ago about that. But I don't think there's a, a tie to this language. Um, if council deems those as inappropriate or something that the city doesn't want to encourage or include or have an option, uh, it, it could be removed or authorized via conditional use permit, which then has its own sets of standards provided in this ordinance. And I guess from there, if anyone else says anything, we still have the ability to make some changes. Uh, but staff's recommendation would be uh, <coughs> to adopt the ordinance uh, with, uh, I guess, any additional changes, including the ones I've discussed tonight. Um, and then we would make those changes and then notify the papers uh, from that. So we still do have the option to adopt it with said changes. Okay. Um, real quick, I'm going to cover this one more time. Um, maximum height for accessory buildings. Um, for the larger area lots, when you have a building max size of 60 by 100, um, with the roof pitch, standard roof pitch of 412, um, divide 60 and a half, that's 30, it's 120 inch um, rise for a 412 roof. That'll add 10 feet to your uh, existing 16 foot sidewalls, making a 26 foot building. Mm -hmm. Can we change max building height from 20 feet to 26 feet? Does anybody got a problem with that? No, yep. and it's actually listed as accessory building height 16 feet on page 29, second page. And that, and is, that caught my eye too. That okay. is for the, the plate height, the, the 16 feet, foot height listed in that is the plate height. And the council member Trudeau's point, yeah, we, we can change that. Um, <coughs> I, I guess I'll just ask the question. When, when you were doing the measurements, because I know you came into the office and you and I discussed this a little bit, about and I had the building inspectors go through and kind of make this this list of, of how it would affect versus different slopes when you measured it were you going to the the peak of that gable because it, it was overall height I believe is what yeah and, and then the measurement I guess I would just point out the measurement is for like a gable pitch roof would be uh, the medium between your plate and your peak so when they measure the height, mainly because that peak portion is an unoccupiable space and that's really just an aesthetic portion. Either way, we can bump it to 26. Yep. It's not going to do anything. Yeah. I, I don't know if Jim found anything all different after our meeting today. Didn't have time, I'm assuming. Which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I left you plenty with uh, plenty of stuff on your mind. So, okay. I just asked that we move it to yeah, 26. Yeah, we can bump it to 26 overall. for the, the overall height. That's okay. not a problem. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions on this one? Uh, my one question on accessory dwellings, which we did chat about a little bit, Chase. Yep. So is this envisioned for a, an ability in new developments, or is this envisioned for an ability in existing developments as well? Because I guess my concern would be if we were to allow existing developments to have an ability to have accessory dwellings, I mean, I think the argument could be made that those people would say, well, I didn't buy my lot or purchase my home in this development with the understanding that people could add accessory dwellings in. Right. It might be a different, it might be a burden on infrastructure, yep. sewer, water, streets. Um, so I guess that was my question. Do you agree, Sarah? <coughs> we have no business allowing accessory dwellings within city limits. That's something that can be done outside of city limits by all means, but when I purchase my lot, I expect a single family home next to me, not a single family home and uh, another shed with their cousins living in it and another building with their folks living in it and all of those people on the same lot, right? So there's no business. And, and it's different when you have 13 acres and you're out in the country and you want to have your you know, mother-in-law suite because you don't want to live with them. I get it, right? But in city limits, absolutely no business. That has no business in this city, period. Same thing with wind turbines, and I work in the renewable industry, right? So I love renewable energy, and I think solar panels are fabulous. But wind turbines, there's a lot more to a wind turbine than anybody in this room knows. Flicker is a big deal. Sound, the effects on birds, the effects on habitat. I mean, I'm sorry. We have no business allowing wind turbines within city limits. We can do that. And I mean, solar panels on your roof is totally different, right? You're not going to deal with emissions. You're not going to deal with noise. You're not going to deal with habitats. You're not going to deal with all of that. But wind turbines, you, that's not something you screw around with in city limits. I see no wind turbines in the city of Fargo for a reason. We should not be putting that in our ordinance. I'm sorry. <coughs> Regardless of whether or not people have 
larger lots. I myself have a larger lot. Still, my neighbors aren't going to appreciate if I put a wind turbine up in my backyard, even though I can get them at cost and I can put it in and I can make my meter run backwards. I'm not going to do that because it's not appropriate within city limits. I agree. With Anyone Sarah. else's thoughts? I agree with Sarah on both. I agree. Sarah, for <laughs> I agree. With I think you know why. For, for once, <laughs> you know why it was included. <laughs> huh? So you know why it was included. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going with it. And that person moved out of town, and he can have his wind turbine down there. <laughs> he probably does. And anywhere he wants. So. Not, not yet. I was just there. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> All right. I got no problem taking that. Dear Mount guy. Honestly. Robert, what? Yeah, can I make a comment, sir? Actually, I, I agree with that. Love the sentiment. Um, <laughs> the concern I had when I looked at the thing here, it says energy facility like 20 times in here. Um, it goes up to having multiple energy producing like, systems. Um, it talks about varying underground transmission lines, which it seems all thoughtful and, and logical, but I would agree. It's not feasible. I wouldn't want to have this. You know, near me. Well, you're time. you're talking about wind energy conversion systems. He's including solar panels and everything in the discussion. So no, no, I'm the I'm talking about the wind energy facility. That's what's in the ordinance. That's the words used. Yeah, that's its own section. But under the the chapter itself, <coughs> it's, it's alternative and emerging energy facilities. Sure. And, and here's the deal. There's a big difference between a Tesla charging station for... That, that's what I'm saying. So we need to be careful of just... No, I agree. Well, right. I mean, it's, it's very different. If somebody axing. needs to yes. plug in their car and has to put a panel in their garage, that's very different than an actual wind turbine or multiples and a system with batteries and the whole nine yards, right? I agreed. Yes. I, I, I wouldn't care about a solar panel. I wouldn't have to look at it. Right? It'd just be static. Sitting there. They're all over in the south on people's roofs, and it doesn't bother a soul. <laughs> the, the other thing I saw in there, it said there has to be a community <coughs> development department. Is that a thing we have? That's Jace. That's, that's Jace. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> the department. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't realize. Yeah. So the, the, he's in charge of all of this uh, management and enforcement, which there's, there's a lot of stuff here. There it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's so, very busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, set my piece, I think. I, I, yeah. I think that we can maybe modify this for conditional use permits for you know, residential solar panels or, you know, charging stations, EV charging stations. <coughs> and I don't know if I would include an EV charging station because that is typically in housed within a garage. Like it's, for the most part, if it's, unless it's a fast I'm charger. I'm talking about the standalone ones that are like by the bank. Yeah, and, and there was a street. whole section regarding that, but we did wipe that out because of the polarization of, of EVs. Well, so. and that's, that's the problem. There's a polarization that's going on but there's also a huge draw on our local grid. Right. I think our local grid, per most recent discussions, can, can't even house two of them, right? Mm-hmm. So right. we need to be cautious about what we need. Yeah, and that was the driver between, there was a whole EV section when I first started with the city when this came on, and, and that did get removed out of this, this section. So if, if we're, <coughs> I'm trying to think of, of the, the easiest way, I guess, to modify this portion because the, the alternative and emerging energy facilities realistically could probably all be scratched out of it yeah. and then I guess I, I don't know from the standpoint of do you do we have to in terms of a land use perspective include solar panels as a Standalone, like if someone's going to put a whole field in their backyard, maybe. No, but and that again is something that should not. And I built right. these dumb things. I got a solar farm down in Florida I'm working on, right? 100 megawatts. This is not something that you put in town. So it doesn't need to be in a city ordinance. So then I, I would recommend it if that's the case to just to strike. So, so here's, here's my fear is I think we might have to have something because I don't want the state to say that there's no local ordinance on it. Because the a statute sits now, the certificate and the permit for the siting of these facilities can't supersede local ordinance. Correct, Granted, but that's it typically goes to the county. Almost every sizable solar farm of any size that's beyond residential use has to be permitted through the county. I was talking about wind turbines. Um, what? What? Solar farms? Um, what about wind turbines? Dude, 
you have more experience working in it than I do. They also are permitted through the county. And they get building permits through the county, not through the city. I'm just wondering if it's best for us to have an ordinance that restricts. Says it doesn't, that it's not allowed, just to make sure. We can have further Do you know what I mean? We, we can have further discussion offline. For the purposes of this discussion, and I'll give you a lot of that because I deal with it every day. For the purposes of this discussion, the commercial uses or residential uses for large scale wind or solar are not within city limits. Conditional use permits can be filed for solar panels on the roof, even if it's necessary. You know, um, a lot of times you have restrictions through your local energy entity, so like Cass County Electric <coughs> or those types of things, XL Energy. You have to go through a whole gamut of process with them. So I don't think we need to complicate it personally. I don't think that we need to outlaw or in-law anything right. to just say and, and the land anything use table, of size doesn't need to be in town in city limits. And the land use table doesn't reference uh, rooftop solar panels. Just I, I, I don't think that's necessary in terms of the, the land use. It does reference the ground mounted in that. So in, in my opinion, then you would remove pretty much just that alternative and emergency energy facilities yeah, from it, the ordinance. It, it shouldn't be in town. Now, I will tell you that in Fargo, XL Energy, I believe it was XL. I think Cass County might have done one too, but I know XL, especially in town and down in Minneapolis, has community solar gardens mm -hmm. that are like 10 panels mounted as a pet project to kind of show people what they do and provide some benefit to the community, but we're not talking large scale solar. That can be a conditional use. Right. Maybe we want to do some sort of a, you know, an energy or a technology center and mm -hmm. they want to have four or five panels in front of their building to show people what they do, and more of an, ex an exhibit thing. Totally different than people putting four rows of solar panels in their backyard. So then in that facet, I guess my, my proposal, and you guys can take it or leave it, we, we strike small scale wind energy systems out of the land use table, which right. then in turn would strike it out of 4-4.5, because there's a, a section strictly to land use and dimensional requirements for wind energy systems. And then we modify ground mounted solar arrays, small in, in comma, uh, to be a conditional use permit. Correct. Does that sound? That's fair. Fair? And then we'll have to modify 4-4.5 to eliminate the wind facilities, but and re reference conditional use permit for anything else. I'm all for renewable energy, trust me. I, I live off of it, but in this particular case, wind is far too disruptive to be in town. Yeah, no, I, and like I said, Lucas obviously alluded to obviously the reason why it, it was directed in there was because of the, the legal possibility that the city was about right. to go in Talk three or four years ago. So. Talk about a one-off deal. Unfortunately, the one-off deal is enough to I know. Enough to change legislation and everything like that. But. Does anybody up on this council disagree with that? Nope. No. And do we agree on the complete removal of accessory dwelling? Yes. yes. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Council Scott Johnson. A um, couple things on this ADU. Uh, I, I guess I, um, I I won't go into too much detail. I guess you, got, you talked about it a little bit, but just to give you some context, at, you know, to follow up with some of yours about like where did this come from? California, Oregon, and everybody has started to put this in place. Just to give you a, an idea of how many people are doing this now in LA County, because this is only done in big cities generally. Two years ago, 22% of all new homes had an accessory dwelling associated with it. On, on new developments in town here, right? If you were going to get a, a, a new, uh, the land behind behind where I'm at in, in River's Edge, for example, your loan right now at 7.5% interest rates, if you only had $2,500 a month to spend, you could buy a house for $360,000. But now Freddie May, or Fr Freddie, Fannie Mae and yeah. Freddie Mac, yeah. will and banks will now recognize the rental for it. So now you can get a house if you're going to rent your accessory dwelling unit, for five hundred thousand dollars, with that huge amount of interest right now at seven and a half percent, 
you could go to the bank and say, I want a $500,000 loan, I'll rent it for a year, and then when interest rates come back down, I'll just stop renting it, right? So you can have accessory dwelling units built in a lot of these new developments so people can afford the houses. And so the, the question becomes, how are we gonna police it? How's the fire department, are they on board with this and can they handle it? If you have 50% of these houses, you've just taken your single dwellings and, and put another 50% of people in there. And, and I don't know if all the new developments have accounted for that, if the roads have accounted for it. This opens up a huge can of worms that I personally think you should at least consider, you know, um, not allow, you know, not allowing at least without a lot more consideration to, to do it. Um, that's just some of the numbers on, on it. Um, also, just so you know what they're doing also in California, especially uh, Tesla and Box, uh, with Boxable is, is now making portable uh, accessory dwelling units for $50,000. They'll bring them in, they'll put them on a concrete pad. They'll pop up the walls and three days later you have a building. And this is, this is a trend that I think we need to make sure we think about in a community like this, obviously, before we do it. I'm so, going to tell you that I used to work out in Williston, North Dakota. Yeah. Providing power, obviously. There was a period of time during the boom out there where accessory dwelling units were allowed and something called man camps yep. popped up everywhere, right? And it was great for us because we had a place to stay, all of us workers. I mean couldn't get a hotel room. If you didn't have an RV, good luck trying to get a spot. I mean, it was an absolute nightmare. But I tell you what, you had a lot of these camps that suddenly sprung up and the people that lived there didn't want them in town. And I had no, no problem driving an extra 15, <coughs> 20 miles after work to go someplace quiet, stay in my little trailer and call it good. I mean, I had no business being in town. It just has no business right. being in town. Yeah. And just and lastly, uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of questions. Or, you know, the, you say you want to bring it up to country standards, if you're the community standards of the new land ordinance. But the issue, though, is this has really started with, and it, it boomed in 2019, in the omnibus spending bill, and they put it in there because what they wanted to do was increase density, reducing the number of lot, uh, the amount of lot sizes across the country. And the federal government attached money to incentivize communities to do this. The problem with that is, we have 28% apartment vacancy rate in Fargo. We don't have a crisis of, of, of a property uh, needing to get more rental units into Horace. So I guess I'd like, uh, my proposal would be, instead of, you'd propose some language, the problem with that language is it's automatically a yes until you guys say no. So I would say go back to your current rule, the current wording in your current ordinance, and just don't put accessory dwelling units, call them accessory buildings. Then if you have a, uh, um, then a per, and, and there's three spots, I'll tell you the numbers. If you put it like that, you can still do exceptions, right? They could come to you because in the current way, there is a way to get an accessory dwelling unit in the current ordinances. But now it's a no, but they have to prove to you why they should get it. So <coughs> if you go back and you change page 16, these are the three spots. Page 16, change the word accessory dwelling to accessory building. The entire 4.3 section, there's about 15 references. All of its accessory dwellings could be changed to accessory buildings wording. And, and 4-5.1, number 11, the entire section is all about accessory dwelling units, and you probably want to strike that entire section. So I thank you. And thank you, okay. Mr. Johnson. But yeah, there's, there's nothing you. that says that if we want to do an area with you know smaller lots, smaller homes. I mean, good lord, we got that just north of me, right? We could do that. We could make an initiative, a green initiative as a city, and do something on a one by one basis. But everybody I talk to has no interest in that in this town. They all like the bigger lots. They all like the country feel. I know we can't control some of the growth, but I tell you what, you're going to have some really upset people if you start housing their buddies, their friends, renting places out, subdividing lots, I mean, wow. Did you say they all like the bigger lots? Well, there's some that most of the feedback I get that a lot of people, especially those that have been here for a while, like that, like that oh, theme. Yeah, agreed. Right, There's a no. time Which, and a place for the right, small The initial proposal yeah. to do a conditional use permit does, does that. It, it's not a yes, like there's a process I'm going to go to. But if you, if it's not a, of interest, we can remove it. Just I would flat out, we, we still have a section for accessory Building. structures and buildings, yeah. like your garages, garden sheds, <coughs> and things like that. I propose that accessory dwellings be stricken. You guys are in? Yep, yeah. I agree. Okay. 
What else? That's it for me. And we discussed the wind. We got that figured out, and you have your height change. Those were those were the big ones <coughs> that I saw. All right. Anything else on that? There oh, the signs. Did we get to this? Oh, signs? those are those look great. Real happy. That's going to take care of. You're gonna appreciate. You're gonna appreciate those changes. Ninety-nine percent of what we've dealt that's with fine. with Gary now signage and. Can this yeah. person have this or that? All those other signs, the Grove, or the other one. We yeah, and, and I, I really appreciate the comparison to existing signs. It puts into perspective for me what's reasonable and what's not reasonable. And I, I think we're well within reason there, unless someone else sees something that's so not here. Jace, does that mean then uh, Ben's sign just gets approved? Like, how does that work? Because they denied it at time. So, yeah, so uh, essentially with that, what would happen, because we've already noticed for it to come to April 15th, I'll, I'll have to talk to Ben tomorrow. I haven't cashed his check or anything like that. We essentially would just, at the April 15th meeting, withdraw that application at the council and pull it off the agenda because there would be no need. His, his wall signage is all compliant with the underlying district. The only thing we really had to look at was the height of that sign, and if this is that's what council is open to. And I guess I'll look at Ben if there's any other concerns. No, I think that was it. Um, you know, I think I talked on planning and zoning. Um, just for just for the sign height, for I'm Ben Woodside. Um, thanks for letting me speak here briefly. Um, I got the holiday lot there on 76th, and. Um, when I came to planning and zoning, I just reiterated the fact that um, I need enough signage. I have some price sensitive um, information up there. Obviously, petroleum is very price sensitive. Um, our EMC reader board, our electronic messaging center, where it displays our, um, you know, our um, discounts, um, what's happening in the store. We just need that height, otherwise we can't adequately display fuel prices, our store, our car washes, and the EMC on there. So but it comes from corporate. Correct. Yeah. In the in the site in the sign plan comes from corporate. That's a corporate standard plan. That's the same thing around to a Dairy Queen too. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So yep. The holiday and gas station sign, he came to planning and zoning. Yep. Um, they denied it just because it was outside of yeah. the regs. No, those those signs. I mean, holiday has nice signage. This will help because now he's. Does it fall within these guidelines? Yeah. Yeah. I, if if the thirty five feet, that'd be wonderful. I was just discussing with the committee here that um, you know we have price sensitive information that we have to post, which is fuel pricing. You're in the. I am. You're in the industry. Um, you know, and then our EMC, our electronic messaging center, yep. which talks about the discounts, what we have going on in the store, Powerball amount, all that. So yep. it's a just a digital messaging center to fit all that on there. Plus our car wash signage, <coughs> it's a corporate standard, and so that's why I brought it to planning and zoning, and they denied it because of the yeah. sign code. We, we have made exceptions in the past for corporate standard signage, such as Dairy Queen. I would think that this would fall into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it falls into the new. Right. Yeah. And okay. even if it didn't, that's something when there's a corporate standard and it matches every other holiday station, every other Dairy Queen in the town, mm -hmm. we want to maintain that continuity. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jason, anything else? Though? No, I guess I'll j just recap kind of what we, we included in terms of, of a, a motion. So in my opinion, then the motion would be to adopt the, the proposed land use ordinance with the following changes of increasing accessory height max to 26 feet, remove accessory dwelling unit capability from the ordinance, remove small scale wind energy systems from the land use table and associated chapters within the ordinance, and then amend the sign ordinance as proposed. Lucas, did I miss anything? Those are the ones I had. Okay. I'll make that motion pursuant to the four items that Jace just mentioned. Okay. Sarah makes a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Go ahead, Go ahead. Jack. Put down Naomi. Fine. Okay. Okay. Sarah Naomi made a motion. I'll go second. 
All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Passes. All right. Stormwater ordinance. Lucas. This is going to be about the quickest ordinance that we so. ever did. So for this one, Jace just took away a uh, stormwater management plan from the land use code. So we gave it a new home. There are literally no changes to the uh, stormwater management plan ordinance. All it's doing is renumbering it and putting it under <coughs> Title 9. So it'll now be Chapter 9-03 uh, Stormwater Management Plan. That's it. So that's the first reading. <coughs> All right. Well, for some, you want a motion on the uh, Motion that? to approve the first okay. reading. Motion made. Jeff made a motion. Can I get a second? Oh, a second. I'll let Stephanie have it. Stephanie does a second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. The motion carries. Brenton, you got okay. the next one. Next one here, I'll have Jace touch base in just a minute on the community development side of it, but this is to update the resolution of fees in regards to uh, fees tied with community development activities, like plats, rezones, certain things like that. Also, fees are brought forward within the new land use ordinance. Uh, and then in addition, horse happenings uh, that would address the advertising rates. In general, for horse happenings, it would an, increase at about 30%. And also, it would introduce two to three, or uh, two new sizes. Uh, one is a, let's see, a double page ad option, and then the other one is a two-third paid, two-thirds of a page option. Uh, you'll see within the attachments there, it'll show different visuals of what it would look like, or what it could look like. Um, our rates overall have been fairly consistent in regarding for horse happenings for the last couple of years. So we haven't had an increase, but this does help us offset our costs of printing, uh, things like that. So uh, it ha that has been a huge resource for us to be able to get information out to the community and talk about different projects or things happening in the community that take a little bit more explaining to do. Um, also for the horse happening rates, those adjustments, we'd be proposing that they take effect uh, starting July 1st. That way we have time to be able to uh, communicate, hey, the rate is different. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some folks that are up for renewals, but we just want to just have this clean cut off or clean start. So July 1 is what staff is asking for that one. As for community development fees, it'd be probably a, as soon as possible there because the land use ordinance Jace, did I miss anything else on? No, I just with, with the adoption of the ordinance came a whole new rewording of fees and some additional fees added. <coughs> so it's just a, it's accounting for what's within the new ordinance. Um, and just I'd point out fees are relatively consistent with other municipalities throughout the metro. Um, and then we did just add language <coughs> in the case of like private development or uh, places where maybe the assessment district doesn't capture engineering and legal fees. Um, that the city does have the ability to recoup those costs um, that may accrue throughout the application and development process and that those fees could be assessed to the property or invoiced to the applicant on that. So um, if, if there's a reason that we would like to increase the fees more than what we have included in this, I'm open to hearing it, but I guess I would recommend approval as I have proposed within <coughs> your packet. Okay. I'll make that one. <coughs> You want to do it for both of them, or you want to just do, do it one at a time? Okay. Jeff makes a motion for both A and B to approve. Can I get a second on that? A second. Stephanie does a second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> motion carries. Next one, Jim, you got this one. All right, Mr. Mayor. So earlier this year, the city of advertising <coughs> rates for the final payment lifts of the Southdale Farms first edition, Southdale Farms third edition, and the Lost River fifth edition. Um, those bids were received and accepted and uh, Quarter States Paving is doing that. So what I have before you tonight is the construction agreement for engineering services for each one of those projects. Uh, pretty standard hourly not to exceed based on we have uh, kind of a percentage worked out here. So for the first one, we had was uh, Southdale Farms first. Uh, that one, the amount of that agreement is $18,000. For Fit Lost River Fifth, this was a much bigger project. So this one 
Our agreement is for $25,000. And the last one is Southdale Farms third edition. This was a kind of a smaller one in our, we had uh, 15. Uh, $15,000. So um, and this is for <coughs> on-site inspection, project management, and preparation of the, of the progressive estimates and the as built drawings and that. So, okay. Any questions on that? Okay. No. no. Motion to approve the engineering services agreements for okay. Southdale Farms first, third, and Lost River fifth editions. Okay. Sarah makes a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Jeff does a second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Jimmy got the next one. All right, Mr. Mayor. So work continues on. Obviously, we didn't spend a lot of time on 8th Avenue in the past, past two weeks. Um, uh, we do have, you betcha, to the point where the plans are done. I do apologize for not getting them into your packet. We had some issues getting some signatures on them, but they are done if you'd like to peruse them. They are here in my in my possession. So we'll table those for two weeks and come back. So they'll just be sitting on my desk if anyone wants to take a look at them. Um, next week, the uh, shared use path kids open with the DOT and we're working with um, some developers on a couple subdivisions that will go out in this first round of first round of construction or request for bids so um, they did start digging in Rivers Edge second today the stormwater structure out there that they're digging the hole for and um, they're planning that the majority of or that the true startup will probably be in a couple of weeks with um, road work starting once the uh, load restrictions go off. So kind of just fill in work for a couple of weeks and then once the load restrictions go off, they'll, they'll start on that. So uh, both that's Cup Creek second and Rivers Edge second. Haven't heard anything on Wall Avenue West yet. I have asked this morning at our staff meeting if we've heard anything from those contractors and we haven't yet. So I assume within the next couple of weeks we'll start hearing stuff. Um, car contractors have been moving equipment around. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yeah, there's, out there's an excavator out at Wall West, yep. a couple of bulldozers and stuff out on out on Cup Creek Second and then Rivers Edge Second. They just didn't take anything out of there. I'm guessing in a couple of weeks, so like you said, they just want to make sure the frost is all out and I'm yep. sure they'll be hitting it. And I didn't get a chance to run out to Rivers Edge today to see what they were coming into when they were when they were digging. More out of curiosity. Have they, they been, have they been getting permits for load restrictions? So the ones that were were removed, were moved, I believe, were moved either. Oh, Rivers Edge didn't move anything. <coughs> most of their state all winter. And then as far as that, I don't know if they got them moved before the road restrictions went on. Or and if, if they did, they would have accessed it on County Road 17. Oh, sure, they would have come off. So of they would have came 17 on the um, County Road 6, so it wouldn't have been a permit through the city. Keep, keep an eye on mm -hmm. that. Oh, we, we do. We're going to have a bunch of people trying to move heavy equipment in with the nice weather. Yep before load restrictions are off. We we have stressed to, uh, like last year, to Sheriff Downer to <coughs> remind contractors of this. I know he did some visits to contractors that we were having some challenges with on those obtaining the permits. And we'll probably, we'll probably do a reminder to them too. Make sure, because so. it unnecessarily mm -hmm. beats up our roads. And we do have a truck deputy in town. Yeah. We got the equipment? They relocated one of their, their truck deputies. He was on Kindred, and now he's up in Horse as our third deputy. I thought we had to buy the equipment. Yeah, but for having the deputy with the equipment in town. Oh, so he's is, here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They reallocated, or re Re reassigned yeah. resources. <coughs> what else you got, Jim? Okay. That's it. Any questions for Jim? Thank you. Okay. <coughs> right, you got the next. Jim, one quick question. I haven't seen the change order that was in dispute. No, we have to talk about that one. You and I need it. We haven't just made the time to talk about it. Okay. That's where that comes out. Good. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Brent, you're up. Okay. The first one I have here, <coughs> a few. Uh, last week, Councilmember Trudeau and I went out to Bismarck, which I appreciate him coming with me for that one. Uh, to testify to the interim tax and finance committee. Uh, that committee is made of legislators, both senators and representatives at the state level. Uh, in regards to a study regarding special assessments, and in this study, what they're encouraged to study is, in a nutshell, 
exempting or giving a it's a uh, this entity. way uh, other entities entities that have land within the city but have constituents outside of just the city limits the ability to be exempt from special assessment districts or to stop or to stop them or to force us to have to negotiate a dollar amount with them before we build the project the main point of the testimony was in regards to center code has a special assessment process that gives all property owners the same rights and encouraging them to maintain that and not give any preferential treatment to any property owners doesn't matter who owns the property um, that was the main point of con or of our argument to them uh, I believe it was received fairly well by quite a few of the legislators and we'll continue to pay attention to that I'll keep you apprised if it develops to anything more um, being a study they did say they want to meet to talk about the studies a few more times so we'll be watching that League of Cities also gave testimony in regards to it uh, so did uh, Paul Fricasi and another individual on behalf of the Association of Counties they offered to be more of a resource and then the tax department started off basically providing them some information what they found actually was uh, like school districts made up very little of the <coughs> Uh, political subdivisions that are impacted by special assessments it was park districts uh, made up the most followed by counties and cities and then I believe it was uh, then it was school districts so anyways it was interesting information uh, like I said good conversation we did talk to a, le a couple of legislators afterwards uh, Councilman Trudeau and I and had a very good conversation there um, like I said we'll keep an eye on it because there could be a potential for a bill next session uh, Levi Bachmeyer from the school district did present just very briefly uh, his points of you know, why it's important to them and regurgitating a testimony they provide before so uh, like I said it's it's really important to us and want to make sure that we make sure that there's something special treatment to anybody based on just because you're a political sub or not so uh, other one I have regarding tax wise is tax equalization meeting will be next or next council meeting April 15th at 5:30. So we're starting a little bit earlier. Uh, Paul Fricasi will come down. He's talk. He'll talk with council about the tax equalization like he <coughs> has each year. Um, <coughs> overall, not as big of an increase. Are the letters going out? I believe you only get a letter if you're up a certain percent. I believe letters have gone out in the horse. What he has indicated to me in the ballpark, I haven't reviewed uh, information yet on it. But uh, ballpark on average, existing homes horse-wise, be about two to three percent range on average. Now keep in mind, some will be higher, some will be lower. Um, How much? Do you think? Two to three percent. And if you're lower than what percent, you don't get a letter. It's ten. Yeah. Oh, it's ten or is it fifteen? It's 15. They did change the statement out, or drastically, uh, on the statement, or on, not statement, the, well, the informational letter and everything. It says taxable value, what you're at in 2023, and what you'd be at 2024 proposed. It doesn't break it out based on tax and entity, and it doesn't talk about mills. Uh, so does it break it out between dwelling and property? I believe it was dwelling and property but it didn't go any more detail than that. And then your change, but it was pretty basic. And like I said, it doesn't call out what each political subdivision has for how much of the pie they make up. So that will be something that we have to continue to stress is that we only make up about 20, 20 22%. 20.8, 20 Matt said, right, that's right now, of the tax base. Uh, so it is something important to consider. Uh, it does have a pretty significant increase on overall taxable value, but that's to be expected with the growth that we're having and also properties where abatement drops off and new homes coming online and properties coming online. So you have growth into that taxable valuation there. So, uh, but anyways, like I said, Paul Fricasi will be there uh, at our next council meeting on April 15th. 
Uh, we will send a reminder out to everybody of the time difference, so you have that on your calendars. That's before our meeting? Pardon? Paul is going to do it during our meeting or before? We'll start at 5.30 for the tax <laughs> equalization part. Yep. Uh, also talking money-wise, Moody's gave us a new er, rating today. We are now a BAA3, no longer negative, which is good. So it was an improvement in our rating. Uh, when Matt, has, Matt and I have been working with Colliers and Moody's. We answered a lot of questions last week for them, and we're happy that they, are, it, they removed the negative portion on our BAA3. I do want to stress, though, that keep in mind credit, or those ratings, Moody, Moody ratings, we had an improvement, but they will go up and down. It's just like a credit score, like if you go buy a house, you buy a house, credit score goes down for a little while, as you make payments, as you get back on your feet, whoop, it goes back up. So there's, it's going to fluctuate at times, uh, but like I said, we're happy to say that the negative outlook went away. So, uh, and then the last one, I just want to thank everybody for their help with the Easter egg hunt that were there. Uh, very, very well attended. I don't want to steal everybody else's thunder about it. So, uh, but like I said, very well attended. A lot of happy kids. So we had that the weekend before last. So mm -hmm. that's all I have. Good. All right. All right. On to portfolio reports. So I did the Jay Thomas show about a week and a half ago. That was fun. I had all actually had all the mayors on there for a while. It was kind of fun. Got a lot of good feedback on that. So. Uh, Jay said we might do that again sometime, we'll see. Um, then uh, we met with Starion Bank last week, did talk with them a little bit, kind of to see what, uh, you know, looking at the future a little bit and what they think interest rates are going to do and um, you know, the way they handle some of our money, we want to kind of have, have conversations with them once in a while, so that was good to do. Um, I'm going to try and schedule a meeting with uh, Fargo, probably with Mahoney and Redlinger. Brent and you'll be in on this mm -hmm. one. We'll get Greg Steeman, our rep, together. We're going to talk about that Flush to Fargo project. I want to see if we can get that. There might be a way we can get some funding for that thing with working with Fargo. Um, so we don't have to do anything special for it. But we do need to start looking at getting pipes in the ground in 2025. So that is coming up. We need to get that scheduled. So we'll have that conversation here in the next couple weeks. <coughs> Sarah, what do you got? Uh, not too much. I was the one person I think that wasn't able to make it to the Easter egg hunt, and I, it, I, it really sucked missing it. My dad uh, ended up having to go in for emergency surgery, so um, I apologize that I wasn't there to all of these wonderful people because I had every intention of being there like I have been every year. But I, I did hear it was a great turnout, so congratulations to everyone for their hard work, and uh, I'm so sorry I couldn't be there. Um, other than that, I'm looking forward to going out and checking out River's Edge. Um, don't have timelines on some of the other projects when they're resuming, so I'm waiting <coughs> that anxiously. Other than that, I don't have any updates. Okay. Naomi, what do you got? I don't really have much either since Jace has been out, but now that he's back, I'm sure we'll probably do some catch up. Um, I just have a couple questions. Did we, Jim, do you know when you're going to start the traffic monitoring yet for that Lost River Road? Like I said, probably once the detour goes in place. On the the detour? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, Paul, I was wondering if we could... I had a resident reach out, and I know I talked with you about it before, yeah. but I'm wondering if we could just highlight, like, some of the new businesses and restaurants in town, like, on Facebook and in Horace Happenings or something, just so we can spotlight some of the new things and um, get some recognition um, and help out so people can buy locally. <clears throat> that would be really helpful. We're working on it for Mars Happenings already, um, and I can tie in some social media. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great, because I know you, you had looked at our social media platforms and noticed we actually do have a lot of people that utilize our social media. Oh, yeah. um, so maybe if we could just kind of highlight some really cool things that we have going on that'd be great um otherwise that's all i had okay stephanie what do you got um as Britton said the easter egg event was was really a wonderful day um hats off to all the city staff that worked really hard and especially paul um <coughs> put a lot of work and effort as did everybody else into it i would what do you think estimate is of how many kids you think we had paul uh 
kids, I don't know. I just kind of in general, I would say over a thousand people. Yeah, I mean, we had a really good turnout. There was wonderful activities within the church too. Um, and we had some of the emergency vehicles come for kids to check out, and I think it was a wonderful event. Uh, Paul, did you time it? How long did the Easter egg? Ten, uh, how, said, how many eggs? Uh, 30,000. 30, three minutes and 26 seconds. I have a great video that I just, <coughs> just posted at 7 o'clock. Okay. So and sure I think out, my great. unofficial time was um, in, did you say about three minutes for the hunt? Three minutes and 26 seconds. And then I'd say 18 minutes total. The kids were at the <coughs> table with the golden tickets looking for the bigger yeah. prizes and were very, very excited. So it was a great day. Okay. Jeff, what do you got? Um, as Brenton mentioned earlier, I went out with uh, Brenton to Bismarck um, to <laughs> address some of our concerns. Uh, I think we did actually uh, a very good job of that without uh, being pointed. Um, as far as me, I'm going to need some way to cover for my Metricog meeting next week from the sound of it. I will be doing a day trip or two to Washington, uh, and then the following week I will be out um, in Augusta, Georgia as well. So um, I'm going to be gone a couple of times here uh, within the next two weeks. We, we may have an issue because I am too, and I may be able to so call in remotely in the meeting on the 15th, so but... Technically, at Metricog, I am Jeff's alternate still on that, so okay. I could... I'll probably be able to make it. But for so. council. For council. So yeah. so my problem is uh, oh, the for second week I'm flying into Augusta, yeah. Georgia, I can't fly in a day early because plane tickets are <laughs> absolutely <laughs> ridiculous yeah. because the Masters <laughs> is going on. Oh. And so I have to travel either Monday or Monday. And so I'm trying to get in by 2.30 Monday so I can at least get set up to join your meeting. Um, I'm trying. Hopefully I don't get delayed. That's, that is my... My thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, otherwise, I will be at the meeting then Monday night, uh, virtually online, um, and then uh, I'm hoping to be back Wednesday <coughs> and that, that later that week. So, good times. All right. So, with that, then I will say that uh, I'll have to read this preamble. Executive session held pursuant to NDCC 44-04-19.1. To discuss the negotiating strategy for the purchase of real property related to CHS Inc. property. Um, somebody want to bring us into executive session, and then we're going to take a five minute break. Go ahead, Brooklyn. Okay, I'll take it. I'll make the motion to go into executive session. Okay, and we just make a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, Jeff does a second. All right, five minute break, guys. Yeah, here, call the question. Hmm? I think you had a motion and a second, I'll be. All in favor, say, say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs>